This is the Buzz Adams Morning Show Podcast. Barstool Talk Daily. Except it's really early in the morning and no booze. For the most part. Get some coffee. They're going to be pretty angry with you at the office if you don't get a move on. So without turning this into a big production, just wake up and get going. Wakey, wakey. Wakey, wakey, hands off, snakey. Phone gets a really right up of the hood. So I'm built to let the eye know what cooks. I think I'll stay in bed and dream all day. The world outside bugs me anyway. When I get things going, the going gets rough. Myself, why get up? Good morning. Why get up? Good morning, sleepyhead. Why get up? Wake up, boo! Ah, can I get up? Are you ready to rock? Why should I get up? Yeah, she's wake up. This whole world's gone crazy. Think I've seen enough. I'm gonna roll back on over. Why get up? It's showtime! Waking up West Texas. News you lose. Wake up! This is the Buzz Adams Morning Show. All right, thank you so much. Good morning and welcome to the show, everybody. Thanks for joining us. It's the Buzz Adams Morning Show on the air for Tuesday, and it's July 23rd. Welcome to Tuesday, everybody. As soon as the morning show's over, you're going to hear... Double shots featured throughout the day, sprinkled in, maybe because, you know, we're getting so close to the end of July, we could get some July Iron Maiden going on. Uh, Two for Tuesday will be all day leading up to Loudwire Nights tonight at 7 o'clock, as soon as the morning show wraps up. Good morning, Joanna. Good morning, Buzz. We have a lot of interesting uh, stuff to talk about. Let me tell you about the free concert (laughs) events that we have going on this week. Tomorrow, uh, the State Line Patio Concert Series continues for another couple of weeks. You can head out and uh, check out the live music on stage. And the music this week is Small Town Habit. All right. Get there early. Have some barbecue. Gosh, bring an appetite. It's a great restaurant. Eat some tasty State Line barbecue. Have an ice cold beverage. Glenn will be there. He's going to have stuff to give away. And enjoy the music of Small Town Habit on the State Line Patio stage. Read more at klaq.com. And Thursday will be our second to last Cool Canyon Nights free concert. Oh, wow. It is free to attend. I was told there are some VIP tickets remaining if you want to go that route. But otherwise, free to attend. Parking is free, too. And the entertainment is Celebration, a tribute to... Uh, to Cool in the Gang. Now, I went to their website to find out if they only play Cool in the Gang. So oh, they, yeah. they give uh, the abbreviations of some other bands that they that they pay tribute to. So oh, in cool. addition uh, to Cool in the Gang, EWF. Come on, you got this. EWF. Yeah. EWF. And T.O.P. No? No. Uh, apparently, EWF F stands for Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, okay. And TOP stands for Tower of Power. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, the great. Tower yeah. of Power. <laughs> lead singer Robert Palmer, who we just heard on that intro song, that Why Get Up song. That's, uh-huh. that's Robert Palmer. Amazing. From Tower of Power. They did an absolutely excruciating cover of T-Rex's Bang a Gong, <laughs> Tower of Power. <laughs> Not Celebration, Tower of Power did. So on Thursday, Celebration, a tribute to Cool and the Gang and other music of that era. And then a week from Thursday, we wrap things up with Funky Mungle. We save the uh, favorite for last. Funky <laughs> Mungle will be performing. We always plan on a packed amphitheater uh, for Funky Mungle. Yeah, for sure. So uh, this week and next Thursday, and then that is going to conclude the summer Cool Canyon Night series. And we've got a couple of weeks left in the State Line Patio series, too. So both of those not quite done for the year, but 
Getting close, closing in on it. Good morning, Joanna Barber. Good morning. Joanna, why don't you uh, tell us what's coming up in the Hollywood Cheese Mate today? Sure. If you were hoping that the final season of The Boys, season five, will be coming to you anytime soon, don't get your hopes up because Billy Butcher himself has confirmed our worst fears and how long it'll take until we see our favorite gang of soups and bloody diabolical boys again. So that's Carl Urban, right? Yes. All I hear is his accent. Right. Listen to me here. (laughs) You listen, you listen, kid. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's him. We're going to take down bloody Homelander. (laughs) (laughs) He doesn't really do a Scottish. I don't know why I'm doing a Scottish accent. It kind of went Scottish, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it kind of went a little Scottish. (laughs) That's that's Billy uh, Butcher. Uh, We'll have that coming up. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Also, somebody's ears must have been ringing yesterday when you did the Hollywood Cheese May. Oh. Yeah. I've got a story about celebrity clones. You were talking about somebody being (laughs) stinky. Yeah. And I got a story about celebrity (laughs) cologne uh, that I want to share with you. Uh, Let's get a look at El Paso weather. This is the Golfer's Forecast. It's brought to you by Painted Dunes Desert Golf Course. Mostly sunny today, but we are going to include about a 15% chance of rain in the afternoon. That means 15% of the coverage area, mm-hmm. basically El Paso County and a few uh, areas adjacent to that. But uh, essentially what that means is 15% of the coverage area. Uh, 92 for the high temperature is going to keep things relatively cool, keep us below 100 here for the next few days. Tomorrow and Thursday and Friday, it looks like no rain in the forecast. Sunny and mid-90s, upper 90s, maybe even 100 in there for Friday. They're saying 100 degrees. Now for the weekend, uh, if you're planning outdoor activity, including golf, there's a little bit of a chance of rain. Uh, Saturday afternoon, we're going to put that chance of rain about 20%. And then on Sunday, we have about a 25, 30% chance of rain. Both of those in the afternoon, Saturday and Sunday. So just keep that in mind. Uh, A little chance of rain, 20, 25% on Saturday and Sunday. El Paso weather and the golfer's forecast is brought to you by Painted Dunes Desert Golf Course. Don't forget, you can set up your tee times and reservations all online now at PaintedDunes.com. That's PaintedDunes.com or call the Pro Shop, 915-821-2122 for Painted Dunes Desert Golf Course. All right, Joanna. Yes. Uh, it's Everybody's had a day or two to get used to the fact that Joe Biden is out of the presidential race. Uh-huh. The Olympics start on Friday. Okay. I'm trying to muster up my Olympic fever. <laughs> I don't even feel a little bit hot right now. But hopefully, I by, by Friday, I will have full-on... Olympic, Olympic fever. Olympic fever, that's right. Um... We've got plenty to talk about today. I believe I'm going to get a true crime. Yes, we're definitely getting a true crime report. Cool. We've got a uh, a few things, a list of the best behaved dog breeds and the worst behaved dog breeds. And I think this will be interesting to you because you recently got a puppy. I got a puppy. And I'm afraid uh, if I'm right about what you what breed you got, uh-huh. not on the top 10 of the best <gasps> behaved but oh, in no. the bottom 10 of worst, worst behavior. Oh, no. Uh, Joanna, is That's it getting big, your puppy? She is getting bigger by the day. Those, those dogs get big. What's, uh, and it's a what, a husky? It's mm-hmm. a husky. You know, my Jack so cute. is a Siberian. My, my, what? My Jack. Your Jack? Uh, he's Siberian husky. If is Jack he? gets up on yeah. the sofa, do you tell him to get down by going, Jack, off, Jack, off, Jack, off? <laughs> if I had a nickel for every time <laughs> you've used that joke. I've heard him use it several I know. times. <laughs> if I had a like nickel. Without, I even being on the show. Yeah, and right now he's thinking, no, I haven't. I just came up with <laughs> no, that. I just made that up yeah. just a second. I had a dog named Stains when I was a kid. Stains? Because mm-hmm, he had little spots on him. You know. Oh, so he didn't. You. But he was always running away, and I'd have to go wander around the neighborhood yelling for him. Come stains, come stains. Oh my god, stains. Okay, well at least this one's new. Nico, news headlines. What do you have on the way for us today? 
I got Doritos for us to try. I don't know if that's... <laughs> I noticed you walked in with Doritos. open... By the way, open bags of Well, Doritos. I had to try them first. Okay, so <laughs> Doritos came out with some new flavors that I think we would all uh, benefit from trying. You want to read them? Doritos hot mustard flavor. That doesn't sound awful. Cool. Doritos tangy pickle. Oh, I love I, the hot mustard dipping sauce at McDonald's. Yeah? Delicious. So I thought uh, you could try them. Sure. <laughs> like how they are open. <laughs> I had to try them first. Were they good? What'd you think? I'm, I don't or know. you don't want to tell us yet. I'm, I don't know if they're good or not. Cause they, they're what very do you have there? Cherry cheese Danish? Oh, these, oh, these are my breakfast. Uh, <laughs> are they cherry cheese Danishes? It's not cherry cheese. It's a... Uh, like a creek. What it's is it? ham and cheese. Oh, I see. <laughs> Why are you... <laughs> Just curious. He's like, what are we going to be eating in a bit? No, these are mine. <laughs> you share with Buzz. Not today. I'm really hungry today. <laughs> here, before we get into the break, I'm going to have today in sound clips we were hearing from President Biden. Hey, what were you doing in Milwaukee? <laughs> uh, we're going to hear. <laughs> we're going to hear now presidential nominee Kamala Harris nice. talking. What she had to say yesterday. You don't want to tell people why that was funny. <laughs> Uh, because I have a story up here. Okay, so you know they had the Republican National Convention last week in Milwaukee. Yeah. we got to talk a little bit about this. Grinder says their app went down because so many people signed into Grinder in Milwaukee. And then they said as soon as the RNC was over... All the most of the people signed out of Grinder, so people went to there the Republican are, National. So <laughs> many closeted Republicans or conservatives, probably. You're saying you wouldn't find this surprising if it was the Democratic National Convention? No, they're open about it. But they're, the fact they're pretty that, gay. that at the RNC they crashed Grinder because so many people were they looking were so for popular. hookups. <laughs> That's why I have that story open. And we have a lot more on the way today. We're going to have today in sound clips coming up here in just a few minutes. Here from Biden, here from Harris. Uh, there's other stuff in the news as well, so we'll be getting to that here in just a few the minutes. The Daily Calendar. Today is July 23rd, the day we set aside to celebrate vanilla ice cream. Celebrate responsibly. It's also peanut butter and chocolate day. Hot enough for you day. Hot enough for you. And National Sprinkle Day for those delicious little sprinkles. And it's National Gorgeous Grandma Day. So ladies, own it. That is your daily calendar. Double G here. Coming up after the Buzz Adams Morning Show at 10, feature double shots throughout the day. Wednesday night, grab a out to the patio for great music at the State Line, benefiting the Child Crisis Center of El Paso. Broadcasting from El Paso for El Paso, the Buzz Adams Morning Show on 95.5 KLAQ. All right, today in sound clips uh, coming up in just a moment, I want to let you know that somebody for the morning show is going to be out at Total Wine and More. It's Joanna Barba who's going to be Woo! at Total Wine and More Woo! at the Fountains at Farah this Friday from five to seven. Those are fun. Uh, How do you always get the wine ones? <laughs> well, this technically is a—I mean, they have wine, of it's course, but this is a beer one, more. right? This is a Yingling Flight, and we're raising a toast to the 100 ways to celebrate summer this Friday. Way number 22, watching the Summer Olympics Games, which is best spent with a cold, crisp, refreshing Yingling Flight. Yingling Flight, raise the bar with the next generation of light beer. And I saw, like, the giveaways. Jo Joanna has hats with the Olympic rings on it, like the Olympic logo on I've got logo hats. On. I've got shirts. Yeah. There's going to be free samples. Daniel Pedroza is going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> so come by to win Yingling caps, shirts, and Olympic Games memorabilia courtesy of KLAQ. That's with Joanna. This Friday, 5 to 7, is Total, uh, total Wine and More in the Fountains at Farrah. And now, today in Sound Clips. All of the day's news with accompanying sound bites and actualities. I'm going to start off with the grilling that the head of Secret Service got yesterday. Basically, uh, members on the House Oversight Committee from both parties telling Kimberly Cheadle she needs to resign as head of the Secret Service. Uh, we're going to start with Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, who told Cheadle during yesterday's oversight committee that things were not going well for her. You have been sitting here for over three hours, 
And I have you know, the entire country is demanding you resign and demanding that you be fired if you do not resign. Things are not going well for you. You need to answer the questions. All right. Uh, Accusations that the Secret Service director was being evasive and had answered more questions for the media than she did for the House Oversight Committee. Those allegations were tossed about yesterday. Here's Democratic Representative Ro Khanna, uh, who asked Cheadle if she knew what happened to the Secret Service director after the assassination attempt on Ronald Reagan. You know what Stuart Knight did when he was in charge at the time of the Secret Service? Do you know what he did afterwards? He remained on duty. He resigned. He resigned. Uh, so she's getting it from Republicans and Democrats alike. Here's Republican James Comer who uh, had this to say to the Secret Service director yesterday. You answered more questions with an ABC reporter than you have with members of Congress. So we have a lot more questions. The American people are demanding that we get answers to those questions. And that's what the purpose of this hearing is today. Uh, the S word got said by Nancy Mace. What? Yeah. Uh According to reports, Cheadle failed to give clear answers to many questions, leading to heated comments. I want to, I want to let you listen to a couple more here. Uh, Representative Pat Fallon uh, told her she should go back to another job, but I don't get the reference. Maybe you guys do. Maybe you understand what this is about. So here's Representative Pat Fallon laying it on to the Secret Service Director. You know what else is dangerous? I believe your horrifying ineptitude and your lack of skilled leadership is a disgrace. Your obfuscating today is shameful. And you should be fired immediately and go back to Garden Doritos. Mr. Chairman, I'll yield back. What? Go back to oh, guarding Doritos. Uh, uh, her other job, her job before this, was something like at a, a, a Frito-Lay company or something. She oh, went from working it. for Frito-Lay to being the head of the Secret Service? Something like that. What's her name again? Kimberly. Kimberly Ray. Cheadle. Don Cheadle. I know. Uh, you know that uh, Chester Cheadles <laughs> with, the, uh, <laughs> with the Cheetos. <laughs> How do you think she got her name? Same, yeah. Kimberly Cheetos. Uh, Kimberly Cheadle worked for a potato chip company? Something like that. I, I will find out, but I, I know that that's what that's referencing. All right, okay, good, because I had no idea. Why Why are they being so mean to her? It almost sounds like these things, you get somebody in front of you, and it's, okay, now, it may be justified in this case, because it's coming from both sides, but it seems like you get somebody in there if it's justified in this who's case. used to having people follow their orders, and these politicians, I think, get off oh, on seeing who can is. be the biggest to whoever right. it is in front of him. She was moment. previously the senior director of global security at PepsiCo. <laughs> Go back to guarding Doritos. That's a big job, I think, right? God, sometimes... Uh, guarding Doritos is serious. When somebody's on the hot seat like that, and they have to take it, like, they can't be disrespectful back. Right. And it's like, well, I wish one of them would just say, well, why don't you go back to pulling your pud? Something like that. By the way, these Doritos <laughs> smell good. <laughs> What's pulling your pud? <laughs> what I know. I was busy with these. It's Doritos some masturbation things. reference. <laughs> oh, don't eat them yet. They smell good. Just take, just give them a little lick. Uh, Representative <laughs> Nancy Mays took a more direct approach after asking a series of questions that Cheadle avoided, telling her you're full of the S word. Here's what else Nancy Mays had to say. Resolved that Kimberly A. Cheadle, director of the United States Secret Service, is impeached for high crimes and misdemeanors and that the following article of impeachment be exhibited to the United States Senate. Uh, after the hearing, the South Carolina Republican Nancy Mays posted a video on X where she introduced the articles of impeachment against Cheadle. Okay, so this... I hope everybody also thinks this as well, that this is a problem with politics where you go in front of somebody like Kimberly Cheadle, you say these outrageous things, and then immediately your first inclination... Get on social media. Get on social media. know what a dick you are. Right, and so you can fundraise <laughs> off Look of it. Look how tough I am. Off, yeah. Ain't what? I a tough farm girl? <laughs> <laughs> But it doesn't really do anything. <laughs> it doesn't really do anything. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, a couple months ago, it was the presidents of these Ivy League colleges. Right. And it's just, 
it almost seems pathological the way these politicians really want to make people feel like crap. Well, and it's a show. It, it is a show because it's showing their constituents, did you see me on TV? Did you see how tough I was? But the actual job... Get, Ain't I a tough farm girl? <laughs> 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 the actual job gets done in chambers when you pass stuff and yeah, you, you, yeah. you know, get some resolutions this is, this done. Is all of it grandstanding, even if they were right. Even if she does need to go, I'm not even getting into the weeds on that one, but it's just like, oh, the TV's going to be on us all day. What a performance, mm -hmm. man. Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris held her first campaign rally as a presidential candidate. President Joe Biden called into the campaign rally in Wilmington, Delaware yesterday. Uh, and this is the first time that President uh, Biden has spoken since uh, the decision to to not, I mean, he, he released a statement on X, of course. And so I want to say hello to Kamala. If she can hear me, I know she's going to be speaking shortly. And I want to say to the team, embrace her. She's the best. All right. Uh, did you see she raised over $84 million in the past day and a half? I actually think she might have a chance. To they say it. that she, well, she has the delegates needed, so it looks like it's going to be Kamala Harris. Yeah. I'm kind of excited about it. The Democratic National Convention is less than a month away. Uh, August 19th is when the DNC gets underway. Uh, let's see. During his call into the Kamala Harris event, Biden said dropping out was the right thing to do. I know yesterday's news was surprising and uh, it's hard for you to hear. But it was the right thing to do. It's, uh, it, I, I know it's hard because you poured your heart and soul into me to help us win this thing. Help me get this nomination. You know, he's not even sounding good there. He even sounds like he, like he's not trying. Like yeah, you know, it, like, it's like uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just whatever. Up. No, right. it's like a mumbly type right. of. Uh, no, that's what I'm saying. He's he even sounds sickness. older than he did when everybody yeah. was criticizing him about how old he smelled. He smelled. Yeah. <laughs> so how he smelled. How, how yeah, he, he smelled. was the oldest smelling president in the world. <laughs> After the call from Biden, Harris told the crowd how much Joe Biden means to her and her family. Joe, I know you're still on the on the call, and we've been talking every day. Um, you probably you guys heard it from Doug's voice. We love Joe and Jill. We really do. They truly are like family to us. Um, continuing on with Kamala Harris's first campaign rally, Harris said it was important for her to try and continue uh, Biden's legacy. Right after Joe made his announcement, it was important for me to continue with his role of leadership in this office of like him, who has said for many, many, many months, and I say it today, thank you all. So very much for what you are doing. All right. Did you see? Um, you might not have audio of this in your in your um, prep, but did you see the amount of neo Nazis that descended upon Nashville yesterday? No. Why? There were so many neo Nazis out. Do they call themselves neo Nazis? I think so. One had a sign that said, oh, "I love Hitler. I love Trump." Well, that was probably a Democratic operative. Sure, right. Yeah, yeah right. Neo-Nazis converge on city. Uh, Nashville residents, this is from NBC News, Nashville residents show Jewish solidarity after neo-Nazis converge on the city. Okay, so anybody who's like... Nashville officials urge residents not to engage with the Nazis. Don't talk to them. And then you're like, oh, well, they're yelling at me. So. They're Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> we fought a world war to, to end them. But, okay, my whole point is, they, some of them had signs that said, we love Hitler, we love Trump. All right, so some people might be saying, well, how could you vote for anybody but Trump? Why are you just against him? I'm against not just everybody who supports him. Wait, you're against everybody who supports him? The neo-Nazis... I'm against those people. I mean, if you if you align yourself with somebody well, who I don't the neo-Nazis love... I mean... Is, I like to think 
well, maybe that's not the right person to, to support. All right. The, the group was called Patriot Front, identified by the SPLC as a white nationalist hate group. They marched down Broadway in Nashville and gathered at the plaza across from the state capitol. The state Democratic Party condemned the event, saying we cannot concede an inclusive and civil society to white supremacist Nazis. Okay. Yeah, but they could, they, any, you know, a group of Nazis could show up and say, we love Nico Ajimian and Nazis. But they haven't. They <laughs> haven't done that to Joe. The Nazis haven't come out and said they love Joe Biden. They haven't come out and they said they love Kamala. I guess somebody could be like, well, what if they came out and said they love communism? Be I, I don't even think you could make that comparison. Here's a little late night uh, montage of Jimmy Fallon. L Lamorne Morris was in for uh, Kimmel and Stephen Colbert all talking about Joe Biden dropping out of the presidential race. Here's kind of what that sounded like last night. President Biden decided to drop out of the 2024 presidential race. It is a historic move. Typically on Sundays, everyone thinks about quitting their job, but Biden is the first person <laughs> to actually go through with it. I quit. Uh, yesterday, President Biden decided to drop out of the race. Well, he didn't, well, he didn't like drop out so much as he kind of just like wandered off, you know? <laughs> there it is. Courage. Grace. Right? You don't see that every day. Courage, grace, humility, true patriotism. I will tell you one thing. That guy would make a great president. <laughs> uh, the Olympics get underway officially this week. Woo! Finally. Fencing's back. I think Friday <laughs> is the first day, but since it's in Paris, I'm not sure if it's our Friday or their Friday or their Thursday and our Friday. I... I'm just not sure how that uh, works out. But have you heard about the anti-sex beds that they put in the Olympic Village for the athletes? Yeah, this is going to be the second Olympics that they have them out. They're supposed to be beds that are <laughs> are enough, uh, stable enough to sleep on. But not to get... Not to do it. Not to do it. The second you start getting busy, they will collapse. Because they're made of cardboard. Because they're made of cardboard. Shut up. Have you heard... The okay. opening... Okay, so... Uh, just to put a note in here, the opening ceremonies are on Friday. Okay. Okay. You know, everybody comes in. Right. Somebody's carrying the flag. A little, a little torch, maybe. No, the torch is uh, is not part of the opening. Remember, well, maybe they when do. We they bring it in. And they light the thing. Lighting? That's yeah. That's oh, the part of the. Okay. Remember, ceremony. we watched that buzz, and you were like, "It's very midsummer vibes." God, was that for this Olympic? Yeah. It seems like it was ten years ago. God, that does feel forever. Because they started in Greece, and they had like a like. <laughs> A Greek, a, a Greek tragedy chorus line of right. people chanting and stuff. That was pretty trippy, but it does seem like it was a decade ago. Okay, so God, get to the Olympics already. <laughs> right? <laughs> people have always asked, why is there so much sex that goes on at the Olympic Village? Do you want me to answer? Yes. Well, I, I heard this. Uh, I Somebody said, and this goes back to like the... the the 2000 or the 1992 Olympics, you got a lot of people who are in peak physical condition and they're also young people and they're naturally going to be attractive. And they're also yeah. going through the most emotional moments of their lives. You know, they've kind of tensions worked up. Yeah, right. Tensions are high. Oh, I heard somebody like else rubbing said, sticks and stones together. Fire, fire's going to spark, baby. I, I heard somebody else say, oh, when you get a bunch of hot young people well, together. Yeah, that's, that's essentially what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah, you get a bunch of hot young people who are, you know, especially if they finish their event and all the pressure's off, you want to blow off some Prime steam. of their lives. Uh, a few of the Olympians have made videos showing that the cardboard anti-sex beds are actually quite sturdy. Here's Irish gym, gymnast Reese McClenaghan jumping, running, body slamming, and even doing a handstand to prove that he's ready to smash. <laughs> I'm at the Paris Olympic Games and I once again have these cardboard anti-sex beds. When I tested them last time, they withstood my testing. <laughs> Maybe I wasn't rigorous enough though. No, they passed the test. It's fake. Fake news. Fake news. It's fake. Fake news. Fake news. Brittany Griner. 
uh, honored to be wearing a U.S. basketball jersey. She says, remember, she was at a Russian prison. Uh, she says she knows they will have to lock in to win another gold medal. So here is from the WNBA, Brittany Griner. Uh, it's just going to take every single one of us locking in. You know, each game might be different. We got to pour all of ourselves into it on the court. Uh, we know we're going to get everybody's best shot. We got a target on our back. And, you know, we, we love that and we embrace that. She got a deeper voice than you, Nico. Have you ever noticed that? That was Brittany Griner? <laughs> Not a joke. That's, well, she's like almost seven foot tall. You know, of course. Yeah, right? that affects her vocal cords. Um, she does have a deeper voice. <laughs> she, she does have a deeper voice than you. Uh, there's a rumor that Taylor Swift is going to show up in the Deadpool. I think it would be really Wolverine cool movie. if she shows up as a uh, lady Deadpool. Now, they were going to make some other appearances. Uh, the guy who played Sabretooth is coming back from the other. The, uh, from the first one? I don't know if it's the same guy because the Sabretooth in the. In the first one. Not, it's not Liv Schreiber. Li- 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 Liv Schreiber. Liv Schreiber. Liv Schreiber. I, I was a big Ray Donovan fan. I guess not enough. <laughs> um, so he's making a, a comeback. Uh, Pyro is going to be making a comeback. The actor and yeah. the character. They're saying there's a chance that Channing Tatum will show up as Gambit. Because he had been attached to the Gambit movie for years. Even, even being announced at a Marvel uh san diego comic con in a panel as the next gambit before the movie just fell apart like it was so such a sure thing that they went ahead and introduced him as as the next gambit at a panel yeah Mm -hmm. uh we need to take a break but i didn't finish all the uh all the audio today oh we'll come back and do everything i didn't get to okay and also good news bad news of the week on the way Get also, ready. I found the Grit newspaper, yeah. and I know all about it now. Yeah. <laughs> when did they quit putting out? Okay, so a lot of, ki- like my cousins, a couple of my cousins and some other kids, mostly boys, sold a newspaper called Grit. And you would go around the neighborhood peddling your newspaper, and that's how you made money for sody pops. Uh, one of the first people that actually employed uh, newsboys, uh, it's still being published. Grit is still being published. Yeah, it is. Uh, well, I researched Cutco. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't really. I got this friend, this uh, good friend, uh, his name's Chino, and he may or may not be a cholo. And he uh, messaged me yesterday, and he had the funniest story about Cutco and being asked to to sell it when he was younger. Uh, we had a lot of callers yesterday who said their first job was selling knives for Cutco. It's crazy that... I give a bunch of children knives. What could go wrong? <laughs> it's crazy that neither you or Joanna had heard of it before. I, I honestly had not. Let's take a break. We'll come back, finish up the news. Good news, bad news also on the way. And much more here for Tuesday with the Buzz Adams Morning Show. Hey, it's Daniel Paulus. I'll be along starting at 3 with everything from GNR to STP. And for your property, your family's safety, and your peace of mind, Doppler Dave Spielman, the Borderlands Chief Meteorologist. Live from the KLAQ studios, the Buzz Adams Morning Show. Courtesy of Glasheen, Vias, and Interman Personal Injury Lawyers. At GVILaw.com. got a few call-ins. I've got good news, bad news of the week on the way. But I want to tell you about Q Connected. Q Connected is our weekly show on Sundays from 5 to 7, showcasing the best new rock, brand new rock. Also, a special focus on local rockers and regional bands. A lot of the bands uh, locally who played Cool Canyon Nights hear Borderland bands like Tony Ramirez, Jim Ward, the Roulettes, our own Ray Ariola are going to be featured along with the best new rock from the around the United States, around the world. By the way, uh, Cool Canyon Nights wraps up. We've got Celebration this Thursday, free concert, and then a week from Thursday, it's going to be Fungi Mungles. That Thursday, August 1st show will be the last of the season 
at Cool Canyon Nights. You got two more Thursdays uh, coming up, though. And check out Q Connected. Sundays 5 to 7 on 95.5 KLAQ. All right, we've got some early morning callers. We were talking about the uh, the Olympics and a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> I, I hear this. The athletes in the Olympics who are from Oklahoma went to the village and took one look at those cardboard beds and said, I damn, just like home. <laughs> we wish we had car- cardboard beds. Uh, let's see who else is calling. I believe this is Stoner Guy calling in. Yo, Stoner Guy. That yeah, is. Yo, Nico, <laughs> after the Brittany Griner clip, why y'all talking deeper, huh? <laughs> Yo, later. Good morning, have y'all. Been, have you been trying to lower your voice? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> but thank you, Stoner Guy. We're all going to sound like that yeah. chick. We're all going to do this. Uh, hey, what's going a on? A lot of people were expressing surprise, but come on. You've heard Brittany Griner interviewed before, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, it's just going to take every single one of us locking in. You know, each game might be different. We got to pour all of ourselves into it on the court. Uh, we know we're going to get everybody's best shot. We got a target on our back. And, you know, we, we love that and we embrace that. That is one of the leaders on the women's basketball team, Brittany Griner, who's uh, the Olympics get underway with the opening ceremonies on Friday. Good morning, Mosho. Hey, guys, I'm not the smartest person in the world, but uh, that's a dude, bro. <laughs> that was a dude speaking just now. Anyways, have a great day. Love y'all. All Bye-bye. right. Now, okay. look, I'm not okay. trying. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to try and sh- no, we're not going to try and shame I, 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 Brittany I, Griner for something that she can't control whatsoever about she herself. She also can't control being six foot nine. But that's my point. And, and a lot of times the bigger the body is the bigger the vocal cords the, the folds the diaphragm and i bet she has a huge diaphragm <laughs> you know that's your part of the, your, yeah, the yeah, 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 your yeah. chest plate yeah it's the muscle that pushes anyways so i'm sure her voice is just due to it is due to her large size yeah you know i hear so many people getting fired up men shouldn't play women's sport well nobody has ever claimed they even say it about women athletes if they don't meet your standard of feminine perfection you call him a dude or whatever i don't like it she's got a deep voice it's deeper than nico's <laughs> but we that need to... is true i mean i'm jealous and it's true <laughs> um i had a few more clips to tell you about but we got to do this quick because i've also got uh good news bad news okay. coming up yeah a Canadian couple was found dead in their lifeboat after trying to cross the Atlantic on a completely green boat, meaning environmentally friendly. Oh, dear. Oh, this is bad news for the, Brett, gre- the green movement. <laughs> Brett Cliberly, here's a recording, one of the last, about how he and his wife, Sarah, were attempting to go on a green odyssey with an electric, an all-electric boat. So we're on our odyssey, and we're calling it the Green Odyssey because we're doing everything we can to show that you can travel without burning fossil fuels. So, for instance, we're driving an electric car. Our boat is an electric boat. We have an electric yacht with a Nissan Leaf battery pack that drives the engine. Uh, We charge the engine with solar panels. Brett Cliberly is 70 and his wife, or was 70, and his wife Sarah Packwood, 60, had been sailing on their 42-inch sailboat, the SV Theros. Their bodies were found in a lifeboat that washed up on Sable Island, Nova Scotia. Wait a minute, they were going to try and take a boat across the ocean and they ended up still in Canada? The couple left Halifax Harbor on June 11th en route to the Azores, a group of Portuguese islands in the mid-Atlantic. They did not make it. Both uh, Mr. Cliberly and his partner, Sarah, were found, were deceased. But they also proved you do need to burn fossil fuels. (laughs) Well, Delta Airlines was struggling to restore operations yesterday, three days after a global cyber outage led them to cancel 800 flights. Here are some frustrated travelers 
dealing with the cancellations while in Atlanta. It's been a mess. It's, it's been crazy. I've never had this kind of experience traveling before. I sat here from 5 o'clock yesterday and I'm still here. Feeling a little bit uh, vulnerable. I ain't got my luggage and it's kind of important to me. I'm trying to get out of the airport because I can drive to Savannah before I can fly to Savannah. <laughs> I can just drive to yeah. Savannah. Yeah, no kidding. It's the same state. I mean, Texas is one thing. You know, I understand if you're going from El Paso to Houston, you you don't want to be driving for 20 hours. But for most states, can you just can you just drive there a lot easier? Let's go ahead and get to the good news, bad news of the week. This is a segment of our show where we look at some of the major news stories of the week. And uh, every time there's a dark cloud, you're always going to find a little silver lining. Oh, Aww. Yep. that's nice. If you got a frown, turn it upside down. Yeah. It's the good news, bad news of the week. And we begin with... Oh. Bad news. Bad news. Last week, Senator Bob Menendez was convicted of bribery, fraud, and extortion. Oh. What's the good news? Well, he's been sentenced to a lifetime appointment on the Supreme Court. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Bad news. Bad news. Insiders say President Biden was furious that he had to step down. Oh, yeah. He was mm. really mad. Really? Okay. What's the good news? Don't worry. Oh, is that bad news again? <laughs> no, wait. <laughs> Hold on. Bad news. President Biden was furious that he was forced to step okay. down. Yes. Good news. Bad news. He'll feel better once he forgets. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> True. In Good news. Mu- in music news, Courtney Love is back in the recording Yay. studio. Oh, look at that. Good news. <laughs> Bad news. Yeah. Back in the recording studio, not to make music, to steal equipment she could sell for crack. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finally... Uh, Good news. You might be interested in this if you're into body modification. The latest body art trend is a piercing that goes straight up through the tip of your nose. It's called the rhino piercing. Oh, yeah. So it goes right through the... What? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's the bad news? It's called the rhino piercing, but it should be called the wino piercing because you're going to be saying, why nobody hire me? (laughs) (laughs) And that's the good news, bad news of the week. 95.5 KLAQ. That's Iron Maiden and Flight of Icarus, and it's July Iron Maiden, and we still have a, compl- a full week left. That was of- a twofer right there. Uh, oh, good, because it's two for Tuesday, too. Uh, two for Tuesday, or... Double Deuce Tuesday. Double Deuce in it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say anything because midway I remember that you don't like me to talk about it. <laughs> KLAQ has officially designated this the month of July Iron Maiden. July Iron Maiden! So in addition with those song blocks and double shots and surprise airings of Iron Maiden, we've also got a lot of great stuff to give uh, give away. The deluxe box set of Sinjutsu. Uh, we've got all kinds of Eddie figurines, patches. we got CDs we're giving away. Uh, authorized and authentic first printing of issue number one for Bruce Dickinson's The Mandrake Project uh, comic book. So we're going to have uh, Maiden going on all month, and we've got until Wednesday to get it out of our system before we get into August. Uh, they have not provided us with a list of ghost giveaways, but I bet, I'll bet it's going to be something really special. Yeah. It's going to be sick. Because, uh, like a proton pack. Kevin is really tight with Papa Legba or whatever name he's going by now. <laughs> Papa Legba? Yeah, yeah. Papa, <laughs> Papa, Legba. Papa Emeritus. Isn't Papa, Papa Le- Emeritus. Isn't sorry. Papa Legba like some, uh, I don't even know the word for it. Uh, the one like from a voodoo. Voodoo, voodoo. voodoo. yeah, like a voodoo. Story? <laughs> yeah, you call him Papa Legba. It's, a vo- it's Papa usually Legba. a voodoo or Santeria <laughs> type of priest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's the Hollywood cheese, man. It's the Hollywood Cheese Man. Joanna, tell us more. Here is Joanna Barber with the Hollywood Cheese May. It's our news and notes from Tinseltown, 
and the entire world of entertainment. Good morning, Joanna. Good morning. Sad news to start today. Slash is mourning the devastating Ugh. loss of his 25-year-old stepdaughter, Lucy Blue Knight, who passed away peacefully last week. The Guns N' Roses guitarist shared the tragic news on Instagram Sunday. However, he didn't reveal the cause of her death, but he did write, quote, Lucy Blue was a talented artist, a passionate dreamer, and a charming, lovable, sweet soul. He ended the statement by asking for privacy and for social media speculation to be kept to a minimum as they grieve and process this devastating loss. The Los Angeles Medical Examiner's Office told the Post that she died at a private residence and her autopsy has been scheduled. Lucy Blue was the daughter of Slash's longtime partner, Megan Hodges. The pair first dated in 1989 and later rekindled their relationship in 2015 following the Rockers' diver- divorce. In the wake of her tragic death, Slash has canceled four upcoming dates of his solo tour. He is expected to hit the road again on July 28th. This might make it kind of tough today as Slash's birthday, too. Oh. He turns 59 today. Oh, man. He's uh, going to be celebrating with his brother Slit and Slice. Oh. Oh, come on. Oh, no. Not good? That wasn't no. funny, though. Mm-mm. <laughs> Work on it. You, you know why? Because you, you sh- did, uh, Joanna, do you have the her last statement? <gasps> her last Instagram post? Yes. I don't have it handy, but I did see that it was it was a selfie, and it was just like a, a very devastating message. That oh, my left. God. The message. Like just... she was depressed or whatever? <sighs> I don't know if she was. Yeah, it sounds like it. It sounds like maybe she was. Um, but in it, she kind of states like like she's saying sorry for so, anyone. If I ever controlled you, my out of control oh. ego, this right. and that. They say sometimes people go around and say apologies. I mean, again, we should probably keep the speculation to a minimum. As Slash has asked. Yeah. yeah. But you, you, you were saying like, people apologize before suicide or something. But, but. <laughs> I've heard before, like, if somebody's going around and looking up people they haven't talked to in years to say sorry about something. one of the signs. One of the signs. So, apparently, the post was scheduled. Yes, it was. But it didn't, like, she didn't press the button. She set it up to go out at a different time. It was scheduled, like, three hours after Slash made the announcement himself. So, when it popped up, it was very chill. It was, like, weird. Yeah. Wow. Shocking, right? Yeah. No, it's, it, this is a, is a very sad story. Right. Well, let's move on to some other stories. Twister star Daisy Edgar Jones and Glenn Powell say that a kiss scene between their characters, Kate and Tyler, was filmed, but ultimately cut because of a note from Steven Spielberg. I don't think this is much of a spoiler, but just in case, spoiler alert. Speaking with Collider, Edgar Jones said that it was Steven Spielberg, whose Amblin Entertainment produced the film, suggested cutting the kiss at the end, and the stars kind of agree with the note, saying that it stops the film from feeling too cliche. Powell added, quote, I feel like a kiss would be sort of unrepresentative of the right goal at the end of the movie, and it's a good Spielberg note. That's why the kid is still in the game. It's amazing. Glenn Powell called Steven Spielberg a kid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Director Lee Isaac Chung agreed with his two stars saying, quote, this no kiss shot was the other option that I had filmed on that day. And I got to say, I like it better. I think it's a better ending. Twisters is in theaters now. I hear it's getting good reviews. Yeah. yeah. Is this a sequel or a yes, remake? Sir, it's a sequel. Are I'll they going to have uh, Carrie Elways and well, I guess they can't no, have well, Bill Pax. The... Carrie Elways didn't die in it. Yes, he did. The bad guy storm chasers. Yeah. Yes, they got caught in one of the the tornadoes. The final F five. The final boss. The, the final. Oh, okay. Well, how about uh, Jamie Gertz? I think she survives. Okay, she could come back. She could come back. She makes it hurt. Philip Seymour Hoffman, no. Bill Pax, no, no. no. Okay. No. Wow. God. Wow, that was sad too. Moving on. <laughs> Helen Hunt. Helen Hunt Helen can show Hunt, back. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, she could. I have not seen it, so I will not say. Uh, my daughter, my 17-year-old daughter, has been wanting to see Twisters, but I only found out yesterday she didn't know that there was a, tw- a movie called Twister that came out before this one. you got to show her Twister, man. Yeah, I guess so. I think it's on Max right Did now. Did she just like the idea of tornadoes? She's like, I oh, she that looks the, like a good movie. She <laughs> thought the preview, the, the trailer looked good. And You're all like, buckle up, Buttercup, because mm. here's the original. <laughs> <laughs> the original's great. It's on Just Max. let me get down to Redbox. 
Hits on Max. No. <laughs> the Boys Season 5 is officially bringing the Superfilled story to a close. But as actor Carl Urban reveals, it's not going to be here for quite some time. Urban wrote on Instagram about his scenes with Jeffrey Dean Morgan and gave a little bit of an update on the final season by writing, quote, Working with the illustrious Jeffrey Dean Morgan was the best part of my day every day. That's all for now, folks. See you in two years. Two years. Wish it was sooner for the final season of Prime on Prime Video. It might take me two years to finish season four. <laughs> That's the rate I've been going. Yeah, probably. Well, production times can fluctuate. It sure seems like the boys' final season is now aiming for a 2026 release. Kripke previously told Variety that filming on the boys' season five will begin in November and run midway through 2025. And finally, there are certain horror movie scenes that stick with audiences forever. But a scene that has stayed with audiences is the alien in M. Night Shyamalan's Signs stripped of context it's not even that scary but for many that scene when the dang alien walks across the screen ninos i think we all know which one i'm talking about move children vamanos and he's just watching and then all of a sudden bang quick throw some water on it oops spoiler (laughs) (laughs) And that scene has traumatized many around the world. And M. Night Shyamalan is laughing at our terror. Over the weekend, I want you guys to look up this picture. The director tweeted out a photo that says, this Brazilian fan really made me laugh. Check it. Go look up. Oh, look up I thought photo. you were going to pull oh, up no. your computer you or something. Looking at me. No, look it up. Uh, along with what do the I photo, call What do I search for? Just M. Night Shyamalan. And along with the photo... There's a guy standing next to him. It's a fan holding up a sign that says, thanks for the childhood trauma. <laughs> I don't know why that scene was so startling. Right? <laughs> the alien comes out of nowhere. I guess because it had not been very scary up until that point at all. Right. Thanks for the <laughs> childhood trauma. And he is uh, laughing at us. Look at him. There he is. Shyamalan is currently on the road promoting his upcoming movie, Trap. The filmmaker, filmmaker described it as, what if Silence of the Lambs happened at a Taylor Swift concert? Trap, which stars Josh Hartnett, opens in theaters on August Oh, 9th. I've seen the trailer. This looks that. weird because it's all set in one stadium. Yeah, I'm totally going to watch that. <laughs> I thought it was a trailer for like another Lady Gaga uh, concert, concert movie. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought it, it was. It kind of sounded mm. like that at first. Yeah. With your entertainment news, I'm Joanna Barber. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You know what's interesting? What's that? Is it okay? So there is another actress in the movie, and her name uh-huh. is Saleka Shyamalan. That's oh, probably his daughter. Uh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Nepo baby. Well, his daughter just uh, directed her first film. It came out earlier this year. All right, I got a. Uh, uh, extra note for you. We have a minute or two left. Yeah. Black Sabbath guitarist Tony Iommi is promoting his new line of cologne. <laughs> and, oh. And Ozzy Osbourne is putting out a coloring book. <laughs> oh. Wow. Hail Satan, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> Gonna need a lot of red crayons. Or a you, lot of black. You were talking <laughs> yesterday, there was an actor, I think it was Kate Hudson was talking about one of her co-stars and uh, his... Uh, has an aroma. Never wearing de- deodorant. Can, oh, you, can yeah. you recap that for me sure. real quick? Kate Hudson, there was a rumor that Kate Hudson told Matthew McConaughey on the set of Fool's Gold to put on deodorant because he doesn't wear any. Uh, do you want to hear the audio? Yeah, let me hear the audio. Here there. she is on Watch What Happens Live. Melanie G said, was that old urban legend true that you forced Matthew McConaughey to wear deodorant while filming Fool's Gold? No. No. <laughs> No, he doesn't wear deodorant. Right. And uh, by the way, I don't either. There like, you go. <laughs> as, as Brad just yes. realized the back I had to like look for a deodorant bag. Right. No, we, he, we, my thing was is that I, I could smell him from, you know. Right. So my, across I, the hall. I got so, oh, we were Matthew's so here. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you know. He, All right. So. Uh, they don't wear deodorant. This is coming soon. You may never have his movie star looks <laughs> or capture his laid back vibe. But now you can have his smell 
Introducing Makana Spray. <laughs> the first aerosol that captures the unmistakable scent of Matthew McConaughey. Uh -oh. Thanks to a unique blend of weed, sweat, jerky, grime, hickory, <laughs> patchouli, and good old-fashioned natural B.O. Makana Spray will leave that special someone in your life saying, Holy sh what the f is that stench? <laughs> Makana Spray. Were you just carrying an animal carcass? Available wherever fine colognes aren't sold. When was your last shower? November? While you're working away, we're working for you. Our job requires eligible speed coverage and other restrictions apply. Visit att.com slash one network for details. Oh, we're back. Hey. Buzz is back. Hey, right on, Buzz. Buzz in the morning show, 95.5 The Q. Well, if you uh, are thinking of trading in or you want to make a switch for your phone, I've got a product for you that you need to know about. Okay. Let's see how I can put this. It's a phone that is also a fitness tracker. No big deal there. And it's also a vape pen. Oh. So a combination phone, vape pen, and fitness tracker. I think you buried the lead a little yeah. bit. Yeah. How convenient. You mean I can smoke my phone? Uh, it's called, the company is called Swipe. Hey, what are you doing? Fitness tracking? <laughs> You take one puff and it's like, you just killed 10 brain cells. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want us to eat the, the yeah. Doritos no. that you brought Yeah, let's in do that right now, actually. All right. And you want, you want uh, to do them in an ASMR style? Yes, because, Joanna, I'm getting really into it. Not me personally, but as on radio stuff, I think ASMR would work really well. So I have some ASMR games we can play later on. Oh, cool. Uh, where listeners would have to guess what we're, what sounds we're making. But I got two new limited edition Doritos flavors chips. And uh, b but do you want to read the flavors, Buzz? Uh, mustard, hot mustard flavored Doritos and tangy pickle. All right. Tangy, tangy pickle. pickle. So why don't, good. why don't you get the chip and put it in your mouth? Which one's... Uh, you, this isn't like a ghost pepper or some kind of like 9,000 oh, Scoville this is the Dorito. This isn't like a one-chip challenge and you're just trying to sucker me in. It's not not a one-chip challenge. And you want me to do it so it would give somebody with ASMR the feeling. So do it real slow and central. Okay. Joanna, you too. Okay, here we go. This is the pickle Dorito. Ew, Buzz, your crunchiness is terrible. That's not how you do it. You I'm trying to, like to be this. sexy. This is how you do it. Like this. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, yours would be better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. It's true. All right, how's the taste, you guys? Oh, that was a good pickle. You got the pickle? All right. Oh, I had the mustard. Oh. Yeah, it's very mustardy. <laughs> Are you out of the pickle? Yeah, I don't have any pickles. You didn't put any pickles cleanser. over here. Yeah, I did. It was all pickle. That was pickle? Here. Oh, maybe I've been eating pickle this whole time. This okay. is the hot mustard one. Yeah, all right, Joanna. And I'm doing pickle? You're doing pickle. Okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah, your crunching's not great. <laughs> <laughs> Just to know that's buzz crunching. <laughs> What is this? All right, now Joanna go. is going to go all ASMR on some hot mustard Dorito. <laughs> this is the hot mustard Dorito. We're calling it asthma. Asthma. Oh, that was surprisingly satisfying, Joanna. Mmm, that one's good too. You like the hot mustard? Yeah. All right. ASMR, Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response, is the tingling sensation that starts at the scalp, moves down the back of the neck and upper spine, and it's supposed to feel pleasant. God, I hate it. <laughs> I do not find it satisfying at all when well, I hear people crunch. The, you don't, but see, it there's different sounds. Yeah, it activates something in me that just rage. Like there's ones where they Mad. just like touch, like with their nails, they touch the, the microphone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
have There's nails. an episode of the new Beavis and Butthead where they're watching the Nays. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. I'm going to tell you about the combination vape, cell phone, and fitness tracker okay. in just a few mm-hmm. minutes and when you can get it. Before you do that, uh, do you want to yes. see what ChatGPT came up with? For what? Okay, Buzz asked me to put something into ChatGPT. Oh, okay. I told him I wanted uh, to, to have an owl with a Hawaiian shirt, long curly black hair, and glasses, okay. and I was going to call, it was going to make a mascot called Weird Owl. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. <laughs> well, it turns out that Weird Owl is actually, like a Weird Owl is actually a band. Somebody oh, already stole yeah. the idea. But when I put it in the chat GPT, it said, uh, sorry, we cannot do the copyright thing. So instead, I'm asking it to to put a Hawaiian shirt, glasses, and long curly hair on an owl and not calling it Weird Owl. Mm. And it did that. I have a few uh, things to talk about. (laughs) Alexa has a new feature to help parents communicate with teenagers or at least understand what their teenagers are saying. You can now say, and if you got your Alexa up, it might hear me and it might start doing it. You say, Alexa, talk Gen Z to me. Alexa talk what? Alexa talk Gen Z to me. What? If you do that, it says uh-huh. Alexa will start spitting out slang terms like riz a- along with the definition. <laughs> As they, Amazon announced this new feature oh, where Alexa can tell you how to talk like a Gen Zer. They added 20 terms. Ick means disgust. Ooh, yeah. he gives me the ick. T means gossip. Sus means suspicious. <laughs> Does it feel like Alexa's kind of doing Gen Z slang from five years ago, though? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think at this say. point, we all know what those mean now, Alexa. Yeah. You're was, a little late to the party, Yeah, it Alexa. sounds a little skibbity. Mid means mediocre. And riz means charisma. Charisma. Here are a few... More Gen Z terms that Alexa has programmed in, but you might not know. All right. Drip. Oh, you know what? Let me quiz you, Joanna, because you got a bunch of Gen Zs living in your house. Man, who knows like what they're Like six saying. of them. Drip. Like what, six of them. Do you ever hear them say drip? Uh, drip is like, I don't know what drip is, like accessories? This is trendy, high-class fashion. Okay. I thought it referred to jewelry. Yeah, but. that's what I thought. Back in my day, that's what that meant. Eight. Spelled A. T-E-8. Oh, like you ate that up? Used to praise something. Oh, my something. God, Joanna. Wow. Used to praise someone for doing <laughs> something well yeah, like or with you, style. Or you ate that like outfit, girl. I would girl. say, Buzz, you ate up that ASMR thing, but you did wow. not ate that up. You ate that chip up. Well, I'll say to you, <laughs> you ate and left no crumbs. Yeah. <sighs> Don't let my nephews hear us talking like this. Do they, they get real go, mad? Ugh. Yeah. Nothing's worse. How about... It's giving. It's giving. Uh, I hear that used a lot, but I don't know. know what the context is? Yeah. It's used to describe a certain vibe that somebody's giving off. Like, I love your outfit. It's giving Beyonce. (laughs) These are fun. Mother. Um, like, I don't know what mother actually means. It's like someone it, who's like a mentor or an iconic Madonna is model. mother. Right. Madonna's the example mother. Alexa okay. gives is Rihanna is mother. Okay. Uh, in your blank era. Oh, so there's a blank. I hate that. What does it mean? It's that thing where you're like, oh, I'm in my old lady era or something. I'm in my because radio it comes era. from the eras thing. But I'm sick of hearing that. It's kind of old now. It is. I hate it. I'm in my drinking era. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going into my ASMR era. Uh, poll found the cringe. Wait, wait, wait. You don't have the word skibbity. No. Nope. Skibbity. Well, Alexa probably doesn't know that one. Is that the one where somebody's head pops out of a toilet? That's skibbity toilet. Skibbity toilet. <laughs> That's a meme, God. but it's turned into a word in its own where you use skibbity to mean 
You can use it to start off a the conversation. The youth today no longer say good, they say fab. <laughs> <laughs> How far we've come Like, we from. could be the old people in 1960 talking about all the beatnik lingo. Yeah, that Instead would be interesting. Instead of money, they use bread. They're talking about <laughs> something called the Riz. Uh, got a poll asked for the cringiest first date text or emoji that you can send on a dating app. Uh, someone asked 2,000 people about one-liners and emojis people use on apps like Tinder and Bumble. And which ones are the cringiest? Facts. No printer. The eggplant emoji is <laughs> near the top, but it is not number one. Here are the top fives. The cringiest thing you could say is send pics 45 percent rated it as one of the rudest or cringiest things you could say especially if it's the very first message oh yeah that that's said. terrible and it doesn't work that often number two is the oh, egg yeah 67 <laughs> percent of the time it works, works every, every time. time number two is the eggplant emoji Ugh. <laughs> you're tired of the eggplant emoji it's terrible it's, yeah she is how often did they expect people to use that for its original intended purpose? Hey, don't forget to pick up this big yellow dong. Or purple. Why is it no, yeah, purple. It's Sorry. aubergine, at least. Uh, another cringy first line. Hey, sexy, what's your number? Uh, Do you like bad boys or bad girls, depending on your gender? Wait, that's in there? Uh, Do you like bad boys? Or girls? Do you like bad? Girls? I don't. I don't think I would have the cojones oh to text God. that. Do you like bad what? boys? Because I'm bad. I want to know women at, that actually send out that message. I'm bad to the funny. If bone. you've sent <laughs> out that first message on that, the dating app, let me know in our app chat. Are, like, do you like bad girls? Do you like bad girls? Uh, then they've got a. Bunch I like of, the bad girls club. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> they've got a bunch a of show. bunch of emojis that they say. You don't want to pull these out too early, like the eggplant or the peach. The peach. Yeah. Okay, so there's something about an eggplant ha handshake. Eggplant agreement. Yeah, they got an agreement to make eggplant parmesan. No, eggplants are d What? You know what? That's true. Okay, clown face. What does that mean? That means she's down to clown. Okay. Three eggplants? And look at the drool coming out of that smiley face. You wish that was drool. Uh, we're going to take a quick break here. I will tell <laughs> you about the combination vape, phone, and fitness track. Amazing. It's a three-in-one, almost like something Ronco would come up with. <laughs> or Cutco. Uh, let's take a... Oh, I got some calls about Cutco still, too. Uh, we'll take those calls, and I'll tell you about the new vape phone fitness tracker combo coming up right after this. Music news. Concert updates. Song and album factoids. And, of course, nothing but El Paso's best rock. Oh, hey, George Dieter and Frizz. 2301 North Sagosa on the corner of Zaragoza and Tierra Este. Learn more on social media at 10 Man AP. Live from the KLAQ Studios, the Buzz Adams Morning Show. Courtesy of Glasheen, Vias, and Enderman Personal Injury Lawyers. At GVILaw.com. Moving right along through uh, Tuesday, we've still got about a 15% chance rain in the forecast this afternoon. And uh, then after that, several clear days with no rain in the forecast, but the rain might be back in partially on Saturday mm -hmm. and Sunday. Uh, so yesterday we were talking about multi-level marketing, and you brought up a company like I'd heard of, oh, what's the real famous one? Avon. Well, mm, okay, yeah. so uh, goji berries used to be, uh, for a fat, was for a while, goji juice. Um, yeah, but what's the real famous one? The DeVos family? And remember, the heir to the pyramid scheme fortune ended up being like Secretary of Education or something. You know, the, the, the one of the most famous ones. I'm just drawing a blank on it right now. DeVry Amway, University? Amway. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not DeVry, DeVos. <laughs> Uh, and you brought up Cutco, and I'd never heard of Cutco, so I did some research on it, meaning I looked up the Wikipedia page. I guess they would leave flyers in high school and colleges saying employment opportunities for kids. Basically, what it would do is you would be a door-to-door -door knife salesman. Yep. Let's give a bunch of kids knives and send them out door-to-door. -door. Yeah. And that was a first job for a lot of people you knew. 
uh, I remember them coming, one of my, uh, either my cousin or my brother's friend coming to my parents' house and doing the demonstration for us. I think they give you everything you need, like a sampler platter or something of the <laughs> knives to, to show off, and then you can demonstrate them. Uh, it says here that Cutco sells knives predominantly through the controversial practice of multi-level marketing, although they claim they are not multi-level marketers. The company has been the subject of criticism and lawsuits for its business practices and has been accused of being a pyramid scheme. But they make really good knives. <laughs> I'm sure. He goes, I, like, I cannot stress enough how good, the, how knives good are. the knives are. I'm sure they're as good as any other knives. Uh, dude, you don't cook that often, so you don't. Oh, and every knife Buzz has, Joanna, at yeah. his house is dull as a butter knife. But ask about his swords. Are those sharp? No. Oh, you should have been here for the watermelon oh, display. Oh, yeah. You sharpened your swords? I do. Where? On, On what? The edge. <laughs> With what? A sh- sh- sword sharpening tool? A sword sharpener? I completely doubt that. <laughs> you don't believe me? Mm-mm. Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, quick story on Cutco. Um, one of my first cousin's son, um, I think he was about 17, 18 at the time. This is a few years back, about four or five years ago. Um, called me up out of the blue. You know, I've, I've known him since he was a kid, but, you know, surprised that he called me and and uh, said he really needed to talk to me if he could, you know, ask him about my house or shows up with a big briefcase and or one of those, you know, with a, Leather, also basically like a valise, and uh, it's got knives, scissors. <laughs> Did the presentation for me. Uh, it was kind of awkward because I know why they sent him to me. Uh, I almost felt obligated, yeah, so right. uh, I think I bought some scissors, maybe a, a, a butcher <laughs> knife or something. But uh, yeah, Cutco's out there, <laughs> and they got all the kids. Cutco. Also, I think this is my cousin Ian. I'm going to need you to tell me which cousin. Which this cousin? Was. Maybe it was one of your kids. <laughs> it was Peanut. <laughs> it was Peanut. Uh, okay, so you know there's different types of knives too, right? Like a paring knife and a, a bread knife and a, a By the way, bre- bread knife is the best knife for cutting tomatoes. I have heard that. It really know. is, yeah. I have heard that. It's Not like for dicing s- tomatoes. It's like though. my secret life hack. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one knife that gets used the most in your house. Is your bread Anytime knife? Anytime I want to slice a tomato, you go with a bread <laughs> knife every time. So you don't, you don't, of course, you, you don't think it would be worth it to to buy these knives. I'm not poo pooing the knives. It's the same thing with any multi level marketing. Yeah. It's a product, but it's just something you could get anywhere else. It, you could get, you could go to the store and get the same product. You don't, but they know it's like you're going to get a bunch of kids, and they're going to call up all their relatives and all their relatives' relatives, and eventually they're going to try and sell knives. But if the if the business model is you then recruit other kids, and you get a portion of what they sell, sell, that is a pyramid scheme. They could deny it all they want to, but if that's the business model where you're recruiting other people, let's say I move to a town of ten thousand people and I open. The first shoe store. Well, I don't want to recruit all my friends to open shoe stores and dilute my market. That doesn't make any sense, right? Multi-level marketing. Yeah, is- but if your friends live in another city, yeah, it does, right? Yeah, if you're trying. That, that's not the way most of this works. You don't you don't recruit your cousin in Norway. You recruit you know whoever you can get to listen to. You know you can you know make this. Good. Nobody makes money off of it, man. Unless you're the family that started it. Unless you're at the top of the at pyramid. At the very top of the pyramid. Like my friend said, he was like, this is a, a scam. But if you come in with me, Nico, we'll be at the top of the pyramid. Mm-hmm. Uh, Unless he invented the company, he's not at the top of the pyramid. I guess the co-founder and him were best oh, friends. Well, all right, maybe. Uh, Ronnie, in our app chat, remember, you can download the KLQ mobile app wherever you get apps. And you can communicate with the morning show directly in our app chat. Ronnie says, Cutco, best knives ever. Buzz has no clue. Well, I haven't done a side-by-side challenge. Or... Well, but you also don't know. You, you probably couldn't appreciate a sharp knife because you don't cook that much. So you don't know how important it is to have a sharp I, knife. I know what the quality of sharpness is. I'm uh, fully aware of what a I've sharp knife I've seen you use a butter knife to cut your steak, okay? <laughs> That's not even true. Yeah. Got a complete set of 
fake wood handled steak knives. Why would I use a butter knife? Not anymore. You don't. I took those. <laughs> oh, that's right. Nico's taking your silverware. One piece at a time. This, uh, what I'm about to tell you about could be a billion dollar idea because it combines two of the most addictive things for kids who are Gen Z. Okay. Oh, wait, wait. Hold on. Uh, nope. Move it okay. on. A company oh. called Swipe <laughs> is selling a new vape pen that's also a smartphone. I've always wanted to smoke my phone. It's a rectangular thing with a screen on the side so you can check social media and send text messages while you vape. Oh, my God. I'm oh, but sure. that's a nicotine vape. I wonder I'm if you sure. could get any kind of vape. <laughs> Nico. Now, what is the deal with something like that? You would have to get new cartridges when it started running out of whatever makes the vape. I don't believe they use cartridges. I believe that you like there's a dropper you use to put the syrup in directly. Oh. You're smoking syrup when you vape? Yeah. Juice. Well, it it's not to replace your phone. It pairs with your phone, so you won't need a separate phone plan. And they are disposable. Disposable vapes that pair with your cell phone, each one costs around twenty dollars. And you throw it you just throw it away when it runs out of juice. Well, that does not seem very environmentally conscious. With the phone? We live in a world of disposable phones now. Good God, how many landfills is that going to fill up if it really takes off? It's got a couple of video games pre-installed. It's got a weather app and a fitness tracker because if there's one thing vapors are concerned about, it's their health. Fitness. The one statistic missing is your lung health. <laughs> the only thing it can't do is make phone calls... But what I found from my daughter and kids her age, Gen Z doesn't really make a lot of phone calls. They prefer texting. Yeah, that's not what their phone is for. It's not for calling people. No. Somebody at Business Insider tested the swipe vape phone and said it was buggy, but that the texting and social media features worked okay. Whatever that means. Uh, They're like, that's all we need. All right. So DJ in our app chat uh, it, it brings up a good point. I've, I've been meaning to correct you on this, Buzz. Buzz keeps mentioning pyramid scheme and... First, there was Swipe. And now get ready for Swipe 2.0. It's not just a three-in-one device. It's a six-in-one packed with even more amazing features. Swipe 2.0 also comes with a double serving of caffeine to keep you energized all day. Plus, AI photos that eliminate the vape clouds for a clear picture every time. And a built-in feature that picks the Snuggie out of your yoga pants for a flawless fit. And for boomers, Swipe 2.0 translates Gen Z slang. He's always flexing his new vape while ripping on Snap. Translation. He's showing off his new vape on Snapchat. Swipe 2.0. Experience the future of convenience and connectivity. I'm Daniel Paulus, and whether you're wrapping up your workday... Lease is 36 months with zero security deposit. Lease disposition fee of $4.95. Must finance through HMF on approved credit. Expires 7 31 24 The Buzz Adams Morning Show. Monday through Friday, 5 to 10. KLEQ and KLEQ HD1 El Paso. A town square media station. We're going to have an After Buzz podcast today. We does. We does the After Buzz. Uh, that will post later in the day, in the afternoon, or been morning, but we do have an After Buzz Tuesdays and Thursdays, kind of chuck all the rules out of the window, occasionally say naughty words. Occasionally. Not very often. Also, it's a mild I, profanity. I want to remind everybody about my uh, improv workshop. It's, All right, uh, well, let's do that. It's actually filling up very quickly. We just added another class. Um, so you, availability is limited. Uh, if you want to experience the fun of play and pretend as an adult and learning confidence and interacting with a group of people through improv comedy, you want to go to MassiveTix.com. That's where the Massive sign-ups are. Massive That's right. MassiveTix.com. That's where the sign-ups are for the improv workshop. There's an all-level workshop being taught by the uh, wonderful and hilarious and uh, professional actor, uh, comedian, and uh, improver Jenny Robbins. That's going to be this Friday through Sunday, and we're going to be at Engine Three Brewing Company uh, on the East Side. Tell your friends, tell your family, anybody that just wants to have some fun and learn some skills. <laughs> 
Hey, Nico. It's Christy and Elsie. Oh, my gosh. You have me dying laughing when you all were talking about the Gen Z words. You were talking about the word eat, and you're all, you ate that chip. <laughs> that was hilarious. Thanks for making my day. <laughs> Bye. Love you guys. You ate that chip, boy. Yeah, believe it or not, I actually sold or attempted to sell Cutco knives for a period of time about 40 years ago. They've been around. The Cutco company has been around that long? Uh, great products. Like doing the demonstrations. I was a bad salesperson, so I think I only made one or two sales before I gave up on it. But not once was I ever asked to recruit other people to sell the product. I mean, I know that that's what a pyramid scheme is or multi-level marketing or whatever it's called. But the entire time that I was selling Cutco stuff, and we went to a few meetings, and we had a few get-togethers and so on, not one time was I ever asked or required or requested to go recruit other people to sell the product. So I know that that's the definition of that type of uh, scheme. But at least for me, and maybe it's changed with Cutco in the ensuing years, but during the time I was trying to sell Cutco, there was never any pressure on anybody to try to get other people to sell the product. Oh, okay. That, that is kind of like one of the main hallmarks of a, of a multi-level scam is... Well, that's why people were saying Cutco isn't necessarily... Oh, okay like that um but there's some people in the uh app chat mentioning these things biani says cutco can suck it those facebook commercials for the nico's knife have me this close to buying some nico's knife yeah it's a it's a knife uh that has that's a really big knife it's a really big knife uh d hoskins says i'm a firm believer that cutco is trash i'll keep my zwilling knives <laughs> DJ says, Buzz keeps mentioning pyramid scheme and Ponzi schemes as if they're the same thing. They're actually totally different, and I think he knows it. Uh, no, no I think they're the same thing. They are not the same thing. No. What's and the difference? One is an actual financial crime based off of investments, and the other is not. <laughs> yeah, but they, they, they both operate in the same way in that you get a bunch of investors, you try and you know pump this stuff up, it's not really worth anything, and then the person at the top takes all the money and... Am's they're different. They're different okay. things. Completely. They're different things. Okay. Uh, Jacob well, says both of them are kind of shady. They're both kind of shady. Uh, Jacob says, Nico, it's not syrup and vape pins. It's propylene glycol and vegetable glycerin. That could be syrup. It's syrupy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it looks like syrup, it's syrup. Are you ready to do the news? Yeah, let's do it. And with a look at today's top stories, news headlines, here is Nico and Jimmy. Good morning, Nico. Good morning, Buzz. Good morning, Joanna. Good morning. <laughs> are you still the asmr -ing? Yes. We're How getting... long are you going to keep this up? I don't know. As long as it takes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have the nails for it. <laughs> is he trying to? Yeah. With yeah. The... I can't with the winds this. Well, speaking of scams, lawmakers on Capitol Hill are looking into peer-to-peer -peer payment systems like Zelle and the growing number of scams on the platform. The Senate Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations will hear testimony today from the CEO of Early Warning Services, the company that runs the Zelle network. There will also be testimony from executives with Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, and Wells Fargo, the three biggest Zelle owner banks. Committee Chair Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut said the banks need to answer for their unwillingness to make consumers whole when they fall victim to scams and fraud on Zelle. I may be off topic here, but dude, I was going through Boss, Tinders, and Custard the other day. No, I... Oh, maybe it was. Okay, so when it came time to pay... No, it was uh, Chick-fil-A because they had the people taking the order standing outside. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to get it right. It was chick -fil -A. Oh, this is how Joe Biden declined. <laughs> it's like we're watching it up you know, close. You know, they got the we're people outside. They're taking the order. Yes. And they really get that yeah, yeah. line going at Chick-fil-A. The guy in the car in front of me, she, the the girl has the, the thing you put your card in. Mm -hmm. yeah. He just held his phone up to it and, like, touched it. Beep. Yeah. And I guess it, like, transferred money from his phone oh into that girl. <laughs> what? Oh, Buzz. I didn't. You're you can so just, cute. You can, you can just hold your phone next He's to He's like a, a grandpa. You're like a grandpa that we're meeting at the nursing home. What? Okay, explain to me what's funny about that. 
because it's like such an obvious, like like how, commonly used. How amazed you are at yeah. it. Like, wow. If I were to just hold my phone up, would it know what to do? You sound like yeah, an, probably. an old man from the, the early 1900s who oh, saw boo. a real credit card for the first time. And, oh, my God. Well, you give them a little card and... And they take your, what oh, a card has money on they were, it? They were called Diners Club mm-hmm. cards the when they first came out. They were only accepted in certain restaurants. Yeah. They only called the them Diners of, uh, Imagine your great-grandfather being amazed by Diners cards. That's how you sound okay. right now. What do I have to do so that I can hold my phone up and just pay with my phone? You're not going to like it. Uh, that I got to would... get a goddamn app or something? <laughs> that would mean yeah. that you'd have to electronically have money. <sighs> not carry cash around. Yeah. Can I got the do? card. What's the difference? That one's easier. You, you just said yourself. You were amazed that a person could put their phone up to it. I could almost, it's almost like I could see like the dollars jumping from the phone <laughs> into the little device that the Chick-fil-A girl was holding. <laughs> that is hilarious. So cute. I wonder if Chick-fil-A pays <laughs> their teenage employees substantially more than other fast food joints. I think they, they should might. because yeah. that, that, that is a workforce, man. Let me tell you. The kids that work, I've never had, never a scowl, never an unpleasant, nothing. And they're right? out there and in all kinds of weather. So <laughs> out of, like, just doesn't seem like what Gen Z does. They're so rude. Right. They're so anti-Gen Z. And they, they speak but those distinctly. Workers had and you, oh, my God. Whatever, Chick-fil-A. Good job, teenagers working there because super sweet. Yeah. What? Super. You know where you're talking about Zell and the banking committee? Yeah, how did we get here? <laughs> this guy. Oh, old old his, man Buzz? This guy He's held his phone man. up to the Telling bank. it like it is. <laughs> Do you even know what Zell is? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's something like a like a cashier's check or something, maybe. A cashier's check. A, a money order by Western Union. <laughs> something like that, except I'm waiting on, on a, except an app. I'm waiting on a Western Union. <laughs> yeah, so Zell is how I pay most people. Telegram, telegram. <laughs> Like if I need to pay any of the hosts I use for my open mics, or if I'm if I'm booking a show with comics from out of town. And, <laughs> I pay him through this mobile app. Rob just said something that's going to blow Buzz's mind in the app chat. He goes, I pay with my watch. Yeah. Well, that if you pay with your phone, I would assume you could pay with your watch. Yeah, but how watch mind is- how mind blown would you have been if you just saw a guy put his wrist to the <laughs> the screen and it paid? <laughs> <laughs> like if he just held his wrist out there, I yeah. think I think I would have lost consciousness for a few minutes. What hath God wrought? You know what? I think <laughs> I'm just going to play a neckline call. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, because you're going to find neckline calls. It's going to be people making fun of me. Just turn Actually, me up. Buzz, don't take any gripe from those guys. They probably don't even know what carbon paper is when they used to have to run the credit card through that. <laughs> so basically, from your phone to the device they have, think of it as your phone is swiping through the device they have with just by touching. The best way to describe it, man, I get you, dude. I feel old too sometimes, but don't worry. <laughs> you see, you've got people oh. sticking up for you. Uh, just so everybody knows, Buzz is not actually that old. His He just isolates himself and makes himself mentally so There's much older. things that Buzz doesn't trust. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Something where somebody could touch your phone is going to give them all your money. I don't trust it. <laughs> all right, let's move on. What if I loan my phone to somebody and the next thing I know is they've cleaned me out? Well, I mean, that happened without even using a digital without, app, without even so. a phone, yeah. <laughs> all right, move it on. <laughs> okay, moving on. Rolling, rolling, rolling. All right, Detroit Zoo officials say two grizzly bears somehow got into a restricted area. The bears made their way into an area where animal care staff just hang out usually. Oh, officials say no one was injured and zoo visitors were never in danger. Zoo staff worked quickly to manage the situation, following all safety protocols to keep both humans and bears safe. Could have been a grisly situation if they weren't <laughs> Instead, it made for a Kodiak moment. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about bearing the burden of taking care of things. Mm. I think those people all need to take a pause. (laughs) (laughs) 
The animals are now back in their own habitat. The incident is under investigations. The grizzlies call the zoo home, so they just got a little too comfy. I went to the L.A. Zoo for the first time. Yeah? Did yeah, like yeah, it's fine. I mean, they've got gorillas and elephants <laughs> and fine. stuff. That's fine. Well, thanks for bringing it up. But all the animals kind of <laughs> seemed, I don't know, just like Bad. everybody else in L.A., kind of depressed. Okay. <laughs> well, like hiding out from the hot sun and... You know, you'd see it like, I think I saw part of that rhino's butt. <laughs> Speaking of depressed bears, a Florida sheriff has to remind residents not to try and take selfies with bears. <laughs> no, yeah. There was a depressed bear sitting along Highway 98 in Walton County, and people were stopping to take pictures with the bear. While the Bruin looked cute, the sheriff posted to Facebook, he's clearly not in the mood for pictures. The bear has shown signs of severe stress. They added that a Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission biologist responded to the scene, but the bear wandered back in the woods on its own. The post wrapped with a reminder, please do not approach black bears at any time, especially those that are showing aggression or depression. Why'd they have to specify black bears? <laughs> Oh my God, Buzz! You sound so old, dude. I'm not that. I'm not. I'm about your age, but you know, I'm not that old. And I mean, I use my phone to pay for everywhere I go, and I use my car just to beep. You know, simple, quick, simple. I mean, Nico, Nico, tell us, does he does he still write checks? Yeah. I mean, who, who writes checks nowadays? <laughs> Let us know, Nico. No, Buzz does write checks still, yeah, and Buzz yeah. actually had to show me how to write a check because <laughs> I needed to fill one out for something. And uh, you never learned that essential life skill. Oh, well, it's not write that a check. It's not that essential. It's not that essential. essential anymore, really. <laughs> you don't have any checks. No, right now I have no checks. In case you want to remit a payment, <laughs> I don't even know how to what without what yeah. that is. I would have to go to the bank and ask for a checkbook if I needed a check. I think I once heard technically anything, you can write a check out on basically anything that you can write on. Like if you include the bank routing number and all that stuff. As long oh, as that's you all I need. Out, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've had write. to set up direct deposit. I, well, usually what they say is give me a voided check to set up your direct deposit. And now you can just get that routing information from your account online. Right? I swear I knew this at one time, but you could write a check on a napkin and as long as you included all the right information. They'd be like, all right. It, it would clear, or it, at one point, I'm going to need to see some identification. Could have been in the 1800s. <laughs> All right, I'm well, moving on. An Illinois sheriff's deputy is being charged in the deadly shooting of a black woman who called 911 because she thought an intruder was in her home. Prosecutors say that Sangamon County Sheriff's deputy Sean Grayson has been indicted on multiple charges, including murder. Authorities say Sonia Massey called 911 on July 6th to report a possible intruder in her home in Springfield. Grayson and another deputy went to Massey's home where Grayson shot and killed the woman. A state attorney says a review of the police investigation did not support that Grayson was justified in his use of deadly force. The body I saw the video and they're in there and the lady, I guess, has a kitchen knife and just I was watching it on the TV that we have on mute, but uh, the subtitles were like, she was like, I rebuke, you talking about demons from Satan and stuff. Mm -hmm. so, so she might have been having some kind of mental break too. Yeah. And so, and so the police show up and they hear about a possible intruder and they may not know whether that's her. I, or I don't not. know. It looked like she was in a, you know, in, in a, a state of mental discomfort. Comforture. Well, the state attorney said a review of the police investigation yeah. did not support that he was justified in using deadly force. Okay. A new study shows artificial intelligence is identifying cancer with more accuracy than doctors. Research done by UCLA shows an AI tool identified prostate cancer with an 85% accuracy rate compared to 67% for doctors. Did that did numbers go right by you? Don't yeah, they? you lost. Okay. <clears throat> a study showed that AI correctly diagnosed prostate cancer eighty four percent of the time. Whereas you got to stick your whole phone up uh, the butt <laughs> to do that, or just swipe it. Is it like paying it? Is it like paying at Chick Fil A? <laughs> yeah, we're doing the contactless NFC. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, this is a probably a good jumping off point. We'll come back if you got any more news headlines, Nico. I got a couple. We'll get to those in just a second. The Daily Calendar. Today is July 23rd, the day we set aside to celebrate vanilla ice cream. Celebrate responsibly. It's also peanut butter and chocolate day. Hot enough for you day. Hot enough for you. And National Sprinkle Day for those delicious little sprinkles. And it's National Gorgeous Grandma Day. So ladies, own it. That is your daily calendar. Artist interview. Zoom music discoveries. Celebrating artists' birthdays. Commemorating releases. Happy and of all things rock. Use your phone in Mexico like Two countries, one network. Only with AT&T. Visit at and slash one network for details. Oh, guess who this is? Buzz Adams and the KLAQ Morning Show. You must be the greatest radio show host ever. Buzz, Buzz. Buzz is back. All right, we've got a few more news items uh, before we wrap up news today. We've got a couple. And I've got the Mo Show calendar and daily almanac of events coming up, too. A member of the morning show is going to be out at the Fountains at Fair this Friday. It's Joanna Barba. It's me. Joanna will be at Total Wine and More. Did you just claim all of the liquor store remotes? No, I think I'm in competition with Glenn. Yeah, Glenn goes to some of them. Oh, yeah, the two biggest boozers we know. (laughs) Total Wine and More at the Fountain Fair is this Friday, 5 to 7, as we celebrate Yingling Flight and continue to raise a toast to the 100 Ways to Celebrate Summer. This Friday, way number 22 to celebrate summer, watching the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games, which is best spent with a cool, crisp, refreshing Yingling Flight. Yingling Flight raised the bar with the next generation of light beer. And I saw Joanna's stuff. She has a lot of Yingling caps and shirts and Olympic caps and shirts to give away. So yeah. come out and you can win that with Joanna this Friday, 5 to 7, Total Wine and More at the Fountains of Farrah. All right, let's go ahead and get back into... That's right, news. What else is going on, Nico? Pro-Palestinian groups are organizing a major protest as Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu visits D.C. this week. The groups are organizing bus trips from cities like Boston, New York, Atlanta, Chicago, and Philadelphia in a bid to surround the U.S. Capitol building. Hmm. Protesters are being told to wear red to symbolize a red line against genocide. The organizations are demanding the arrest of Netanyahu as a war criminal and an end to U.S. support for the Jewish state. Netanyahu is set to address a joint session of Congress tomorrow. You got the hiccups? Yeah. You want me to cure them for you? Yeah. Boo! Mm. (laughs) Mm. Well, the wiener (laughs) boob... Excuse me. (laughs) (laughs) What? The wiener boob? That's that's all you got out, was wiener boob. The wiener boob... (laughs) The Oscar Mayer wiener mobile... Yeah. (laughs) Yes. We'll need some work after a crash yesterday in oh, Illinois. No. Uh, did it bend the wiener? <laughs> the 23 foot iconic, wow, wow, hot dog vehicle hit a Hyundai on, get this, a Cook County Highway yesterday, okay. then rolled over on its side, you know, to cook evenly. <laughs> no one was injured, thank God. Good. There are six wiener mobiles that travel the country each year, spreading the news about hot dogs. We've had a visit from the wiener mobile before. Uh, hopefully, yeah. the driver won't be in hot water with Oscar <laughs> Mayer. Uh-huh. <laughs> wiener crashed. <laughs> a wiener broke <laughs> on the highway. Have you ever had a Zen hot dog before? A what? No. Zen. You go to the hot dog guy and you say, make me one with everything. Ah. <laughs> okay. And with your news, I'm Nico. <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy, you were really only had one more story, huh? Oh, I could do more. Did you want me to do more? Maybe thought... add a couple more in there. Okay, sure. Well, uh, let me tell you what's on TV tonight. Oh, also, uh, Bunch of game shows. we're getting uh, messages in the app chat that says the body cam footage from that shooting uh, is out and the woman did not have a knife. She had a pot of water. Oh, a pot of water. I was trying to figure out what was going on. 
And I was just reading the subtitles that they had posted. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tonight on ABC Celebrity Family Feud, it's Robin Thicke versus Andy Anderson. Anthony Anderson, excuse me. America's Got Talent. Auditions continue at 7 on NBC over on Fox Beach Shazam. And a couple of reality shows are returning on MTV. The 12th season premiere of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Followed by the second season premiere of The Surreal Life Reboot. Oh. That's going to be at 8 o'clock. Oh, I wonder who's going to be on this one. You don't think they'll just bring back Flavor Flav? And, and Mini-Me? <laughs> and Mini-Me well, passed know. away. Oh, right. that's right. Remember him driving that little motorized scooter of his around <laughs> drunk? <laughs> and then peeing <laughs> from the scooter. Nice. All right, what else you got? Oh, okay. Philadelphia Mayor Sherelle Parker announced in May that all 26,000 city workers would be required to return to the office this week. What she forgot to check was how much space was available for them. Higher level workers were using cleared out storage closets as offices and lower level employees were forced to work in six person meeting rooms with nine employees trying to use them. Mayor Parker's administration gave away french fries from a local restaurant on Monday, but in keeping with the theme, there weren't enough french fries to go around. (laughs) <laughs> oh, yes, the city is also hosting dozens of paid interns over the summer, adding five extra people to every division. Ugh. And Christopher Dunn was convicted of first-degree murder in the 1990 shooting of 15-year-old Rico Rogers in St. Louis and sentenced to life in prison. But yesterday, St. Louis Circuit Judge Jason Schensheiser overturned the conviction, a ruling that will most likely set him free. The now 52-year-old Dunn received the ruling after the judge found that in light of new evidence, no juror acting reasonably would have voted to find him guilty of Mm. these crimes beyond a reasonable doubt. The state attorney general's office says it will appeal the ruling. God, but to have been in jail for 30 years and then to... uh, And every time you tell somebody, I I really didn't didn't do it, they're like, yeah, that's what everybody says. And then 30 years later, they're like, okay, all right, we'll let you out. Was there, like, new DNA evidence or something, or just a review of the case file? It sounds like uh, there were some. There was some new evidence that came to light. I'm not sure whether it's a DNA or not. But don't you think that we should have, like, a... Like, they should get a gift card or something, at least, when they get out? Like, some, of some type of reparation? Like some, kind of, some kind of reimbursement? Hey, sorry, we locked you up for most of your life. Here's, it was 30 years of my life! Yeah, well, here's $50,000 or something. <laughs> All right. I would take a Wienermobile. Yeah, I bet you would. <laughs> yeah, shut up. <laughs> While most airlines have recovered from the... Shut up. While most airlines have recovered from the chaos unleashed by the crowd strike glitch on Friday, Delta is still having problems. The airline canceled or, or delayed over 2,000 flights just yesterday as they continue to struggle with getting past the software outage. Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg blasted Delta on X, saying that the way the airline was tra- treating customers was unacceptable. Microsoft says the CrowdStrike glitch affected around 8 million devices around the world. Did you hear why Southwest wasn't affected or at least not affected it as much as the other ones. They use Apple? They were using an older, crappier system, system that yeah. didn't have the updates. That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, my God. 100% <laughs> correct. Yeah, they were running a version that didn't have the updates on it. What? Speaker Johnson addresses Geo Claim. Vice President Harris was a DEI hire. DEI means diversity. Equity and inclusion. Yeah. What What are you saying? Oh, man, it's about to get all racist. It's about to get... It? Like, this oh, whole yeah. thing is about to get a whole new level of racism. They're saying that she's an affirmative action hire, basically. Because she's a woman of color? Yeah. Uh, she ran and won. <laughs> I mean, she ran as vice president and won. She wasn't hired. She's right. vice president of the United States. It's a twist of logic. She was the district attorney, you know, before becoming a senator. I, oh, I have that story. Uh, like I say, I think this is going to get really ugly and go to some really gnarly racist. 
place. There were just some neo-Nazis freely marching. Did you read the story? This was the fourth day in a row or something where these neo-Nazis went throughout uh, Nashville. Nashville. And actually, one of them was arrested for hitting uh, a bartender with one of their flagpoles. And he, the guy, the neo-Nazi, a Canadian emigre. Emigre? Emigre. Emigre. Mm-hmm. Kicked out. Okay. I'm done. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, from Science News, I got the Mosho calendar standing by. Astronauts may have a new cool place to hang out if they ever go to the moon. Ooh. Scientists have discovered a previously unknown underground cave beneath the moon's surface. Oh, that's where we're going to live. The cave is approximately 500 feet beneath the lunar surface. So if you can picture a 50-story tall building, that's about how deep the cave is. Hmm. The cave spans an area equivalent to 14 tennis courts. And researchers believe it could serve as the ideal base for human exploration. Mm Mm-hmm. Because the moon doesn't have an atmosphere, anybody that lives on the moon would have to deal with cosmic rays and radiation. And so uh, a cave is perfect. Uh, the, the lunar surface would protect you. Well, that's what they're saying. What if there's already somebody living there? <laughs> on, the, on the moon? In the cave? In the cave? Yeah. Somebody, not something? It's like a sarlacc pit, for, like a lunar sarlacc pit. Hey, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the Mosho calendar and daily almanac of events. All Today right. is July 23rd. Woo! Let's hear it for July 23rd. Woo! <laughs> Today is National Sprinkle Day. Mm. I'm afraid to click the link. <laughs> it's not a sex term. <laughs> oh, no? <laughs> All right. Today is also hot enough for you day. Now that one might be. <laughs> hot enough for you? Vanilla Ice Cream Day. Mm. Birthdays today include actor Daniel Radcliffe, who's 35. Of course, he was Harry Potter, and he played uh, Weird Al in that biopic that we talked to Weird Al about yesterday. Yeah, and he showed his dong in that one play. Yeah. Equus? Equus. Former White House intern Monica Lewinsky is having a birthday. She's 51. She is now an anti-bullying activist who writes for Vanity Fair. You think she's going to blow out all her candles? Mm -hmm. I don't know if she's still a Democrat. Clinton left a bad taste in her mouth. (laughs) 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 Also turning 51, actress Katherine Hahn, who plays Agnes on WandaVision. One of the Wayans is having a birthday, Marlon. Marlon Wayans is 52. Retired NBA Hall of Famer Gary Payton is 56. Do you know what his nickname was? I believe he could cover somebody yeah. so well that he could stick with them. They called him the glove. The glove. Yeah. Gary Payton was known as the glove. And Wasn't he in that Michael Jordan documentary a lot? Yeah. Michael Jordan was like, let's just say the glove was not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> From Guns N' Roses, guitarist Slash is 59. Uh, Just coming over? Did this just, uh, the Secret Service director resigned? God, if she was going to resign anyway, did they have to put her through that whole... Firing squad? Firing squad yesterday all day? Uh, Back to the calendar. Eric LaSalle is 62. He played uh, Dr. Bitten on ER, but he was also... The boy, the original boyfriend, of, and the heir to the Soul Glow fortune in Coming to America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to spit it out there. Soul Glow. Uh, Woody Harrelson, television and movie star, massive pothead, I believe. Woody Harrelson is sixty-three today. A uh, father that is famous in El Paso. His father uh, was the hitman who killed an El Paso judge. I mean, go look all that stuff up. I'm not going to talk about it because 
Some of those people could still, still be, be around. around. From Depeche Mode, Martin Gore is 63. And Ronnie Cox, the actor who played the guitar in Deliverance, not the banjo. He played the guitar with the banjo boy in Deliverance. Squeal! Squeal, piggy! Uh, he was also the CEO in the RoboCop movies. And he's from Cloudcroft. Don't know if you knew that. No. Yeah, we interviewed uh, Ronnie Cox a few years ago, and he talked about this being his old stomping grounds. Oh, that's cool. Uh, today is also National Gorgeous Grandma Day. Oh, I'm going to have to call up my grandma. She is gorgeous. Today is International Yada 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 Day. Oh, she might be listening. Nana, if you're listening, you are gorgeous. Nana Pow Pow. No, she's not like Charlie Clark's grandma. Oh, no, she's... <laughs> uh, today is Vanilla Ice Cream Day. On this date in 1904, the ice cream cone was invented. Hmm. It was invented by a man named Charles Minches. Minchies? Like Minchies? The ice cream oh. place? This is M-I-N-C-H-E-S. Mm. And he debuted it at the World's Fair in St. Louis in 1904. Forty years ago on this date, 1984, Vanessa Williams became the first Miss America to give up her title. She resigned after it came out that she had posed for lesbian nude photos for Penthouse magazine. Uh, oh, read the next sentence. Oh, that magazine that she appeared in, it is illegal to own or trade that issue unless the centerfold is removed because that was the one with the underage, underage adult film star Tracy Lords what? at the centerfold. So if you found one of these on eBay or even in a, in a pawn shop or a stack of old, it's illegal to own it. Buy it or sell it because it technically has child pornography. Oh my! Oh god. my god! Uh, but that was the uh, that was the issue that Vanessa Williams did a pretty spicy uh, photo spread for. That happened forty years ago in nineteen eighty four, and as I mentioned, today is hot enough for you day. Ironically, not the hottest that we've had mid nineties for no. the high temperature today. Yesterday. Maybe didn't even get up out of the 80s, so. But nonetheless, it's still hot enough for you day. day. You know, the thing when it's hot and somebody comes up to you and says, Is it hot, is enough, it hot for enough for you? you? Hey, Pally, is it hot enough for you? <laughs> is it hot enough for you? Is it hot enough for you? Hot enough for you? There's nothing worse than this freaking heat than a stranger asking you on the street. Is it hot enough for you? Is it hot enough for you? Just getting started. You're lucky it's not worse. You think it's hot now? Wait till next month. <laughs> Is it hot enough for you? Hey, hot enough for you? <laughs> you see, that's the joke. Because it's already too hot. So obviously asking you if it's hot enough for you is sort of redundant. <laughs> Since the heat is already here, yeah. therein lies the humor. We got it. Hey, it's Double G. Coming up after the Buzz Adams Morning Show. Summer night, sell a cold yingling flight. No matter how you celebrate summer, celebrate with an ice cold yingling flight. Drink responsibly. Live from the KLAQ studios, the Buzz Adams Morning Show. Courtesy of Glasheen, Vias, and Interman Personal Injury Lawyers. At GVILaw.com. You know what source really updates quickly? Like what? if somebody dies or gets fired? Wikipedia. Uh, it's just coming over. Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle resigns after the attempted assassination of Donald Trump. I mean, if she was very negligent, if something happened, I mean, I'm sure that's necessary. <clears throat> Well, they but had, I feel like a, a more thorough investigation should have happened. Also, they were just grilling her yesterday. And, and that's I'm, not I'm really... Sitting there like, does she have to endure that or mm. could she just get up and say, you know what, Fine, F I quit. Because if you're going to quit anyway, quit before they put you on the hot seat like that. Good morning, Buzz, Nico, and Joanna. Uh, I watched the hearing yesterday, the, the questioning of, uh, of Cheadle. 
and uh, and I, I appreciated the questions, and it really did show that she was incompetent, and uh, and I won't say covering up, but I don't know why she didn't have better, more accurate answers. And uh, thanks for uh, hitting my giggle button this morning with the uh, with the uh, hot dog, and when <laughs> you talking about the uh, Wiener Mobile. Uh-huh. Good morning. All right. That was my story. Good judgment, I think. Also, have I've, you ever gotten a ride on a Wienermobile before? I've gotten to go inside a Wienermobile. Okay. Um, you got to tour the Wiener The Wiener Mobile, Mobile right. Yeah. So with mm-hmm. whatever you were saying about maybe, because uh, I, I think people have been criticizing her for not giving answers yesterday. Oh, well, here's, you- here's the thing. That is not an investigation. When, when you're put in front of a congressional panel and it's being televised and every one of the questioners is performing to the cameras, that's not a real investigation. That's not a real way to find out answers. And I'm sure for her sake, she was being quiet because she didn't want to say anything that would cause more of an uproar. Wait, wait, I want to see what the FBI investigation says. I want to see what the ser- Secret oh, she Service... Has re- the- she has resigned. That just came no, no, over. No, that's fine. I'm, I'm still curious to see who's really at fault for stuff. I want to know what, what happened. But the Congress yesterday, that's not the venue or the, the way to figure things out. Here is, as, and this was coming from left and right Republicans and Democrats. We're going to start with Democrat Ro Khanna. Uh, and she, he gives a little history lesson to the Secret Service Director, Kimberly Cheadle. You know what Stuart Knight did when he was in charge at the time of the Secret Service? You know what he did afterwards? He remained on duty. He resigned. Talking, he resigned. Talking about the Secret Service Director who resigned after the attempt on President Ronald Reagan's life. Uh, Representative James Comer is a Republican and had this to say while Cheadle was on the hot seat yesterday. You answered more questions with an ABC reporter than you have with members of Congress. So we have a lot more questions. The American people are demanding that we get answers to those questions, and that's what the purpose of this hearing is today. Yeah, because you're hostile question askers. Representative Pat Fallon. You know what else is dangerous? I believe your horrifying ineptitude and your lack of skilled leadership is a disgrace. Your obfuscating today is shameful. And you should be fired immediately and go back to guarding Doritos. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Now, what does guarding Doritos mean? I had no clue. But I believe Joanna, Joanna it looked it up, yeah. Yeah, she used to work for PepsiCo. As head of security? Yes. <laughs> go back to guarding Doritos. Because you certainly didn't guard that, che- that Cheeto very well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got it. Yeah, you got it? <laughs> yeah. You think anybody else out there is laughing at that? I'm sure there's someone out there laughing at it. Uh, Good. Whoever that is, you're my kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you see the one that just came in? Yeah. Hello again. This is Matt Plato. Nico, they they pressured her to, re- to resign. Otherwise, she would not have resigned. It was bipartisan. Uh, it was very fair and equal. And I didn't really see that much showmanship at all when they were doing it. Okay? Chill out, man. You got this one wrong. Some of it seems a little performative. Like yeah. I'm going to show how yeah. outraged I am, and I because I know this is going to be on TV and my check out my sick circuit. burn about Doritos. Oh, yeah, I had a real great Dorito line. And- I <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Mad Plato. If you did not see any showmanship on a televised committee hearing, and you think it was very fair and equal. Uh, it, it, I don't think so. I think the person in the hot seat is at the disadvantage. You know, they don't really get a chance to uh, say things in a in an unpressured, unbiased way. They, they, everything that comes out is, seems like it's going to have some type of bias to it. So I guess she's. And I don't care today. whether it's Democrats and Republicans. I mean, this isn't a partisan thing. It, it, I don't think that's the place to do it. These, it seems like these congressmen really get off on bullying whoever has the misfortune to be called to testify in front of them. You remember they were going after the presidents of Columbia University and Yale? Right. And it was just like, God, it's almost sadistic the way they just lay into these people. And no matter what they answer, it's it's not good enough. I'm not defending the Secret Service director. I'm just saying it. Well, let, let's if th- they had told you, hey... Uh, 
you can either resign or you gotta go in here for a few hours and they're just gonna shit on top of you the entire time. Right. Resign, I'd say, yeah, resign. I'll resign. Let, let's take somebody that we don't like that was grilled by them. The the CEO of Boeing manufacturing had to go in front of the committee, I think last week or the week before. I'd almost rather, hey, they all line up with their belts and I run the gauntlet <laughs> as opposed to what I witnessed yesterday. But we we aren't big fans of the Boeing CEO. You know, if anything, it would it might make you happy or the, the schadenfreude of uh, seeing somebody. Even if somebody you don't like, like the CEO of Boeing. Was getting a tongue lashing because of his company, you know. It seems sadistic on some it's, level. It's part of our pu our public flogging. Yeah. It's like right. we, we like to, it's part of the justice we feel. I guess feel. they can't make you sew a scarlet letter on your on your shirt anymore. So they have you come in front of Congress and everybody's so tough when they're up there and they know you can't do anything. Right. And isn't everybody just so tough when they're laying the law down on somebody in that position? <laughs> uh, here is Nancy Mace, who actually used the S word. Resolve that Kimberly A. Cheadle, director of the United States Secret Service, is impeached for high crimes and misdemeanors and that the following article of impeachment be exhibited to the United States Senate. Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, there w you guys didn't do an investigation. The, uh, an investigation with investigators from the FBI or Secret Service. You are a committee of it seemed like elected you, officials. You had these people in suits and dresses were basically saying, look at me, look at these zingers I got in. Like the Dorito guy. I don't know. It just seems like... Go back to guarding Cheetos. Yeah, go back to guarding Dorito. She was guarding a Cheeto. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, he got finally. it finally. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get to the good news, bad news of the week. This is a segment of our show where we look at some of the major news stories of the week. And uh, every time there's a dark cloud, you're always going to find a little silver lining. Oh. Aww. Yep. That's nice. If you got a frown, turn it upside down. Yeah. It's the good news, bad news of the week. And we begin with... Oh. Bad news. Bad news. Last week, Senator Bob Menendez was convicted of bribery, fraud, and extortion. Oh. What's the good news? Well, he's been sentenced to a lifetime appointment on the Supreme Court. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Bad news. Bad news. Wow. Insiders say President Biden was furious that he had to step down. Oh, yeah. He was mm. really mad. Really? Okay. What's the good news? Don't worry. Oh, is that bad news again? <laughs> no, wait. <laughs> Hold on. Bad news. President Biden was furious that he was forced to step okay. down. Yes. Good news. Bad news. He'll feel better once he forgets. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> True. In, Good mu news. in music news, Courtney Love is back in the recording. Yay! Oh, look at that. Good news. <laughs> Bad news. Yeah. Back in the recording studio, not to make music, to steal equipment she could sell for crack. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finally. Uh, Good news. You might be interested in this if you're into body modification. The latest body art trend is a piercing that goes straight up through the tip of your nose. It's called the rhino piercing. Oh, yeah. So it goes up right I've heard through of it. the... What? Yeah. yeah, yeah. What's the bad news? It's called the rhino piercing, but it should be called the wino piercing because you're going to be saying, why nobody hire me? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the good news, bad news of the week. Find out what's going on. Quirky facts about our region. Urgent things you need to know impacting your drive. And of course, nothing but El Paso's best rock. Oh, 0.9% APR is in finance with approved credit. Includes factory rebate and dealer discount plus TTNL. All select vehicles offers that combined. The Buzz Adams Morning Show. Monday through Friday, 5 to 10. KLEQ and KLEQ HD1 El Paso. A town square media station. All right, so uh, Cappy, Steve Kaplowitz is here. Good morning, everybody. The Steve Kaplowitz? Yep, the one and only, the El Paso sports legend, the Hall of Famer, the host of Sports Talk on 600 ESPN. 
my former whipping boy. Yes, Steve uh, Kaplowitz. That's true. And by the way, I got to tell you something. <laughs> um, you know, I have had recently people, you know, tell me about how much they enjoyed when I was a regular on this show. And it's fascinating to me because I haven't been a regular on this show in almost 27 years. And yet it's like time has just, you know, stood still for right. them. And well, you're kind of a regular now. Well, I feel like it. I mean, I feel like I get to come in here pretty much, yeah. you know, whenever uh, I, I'd like to say hi and, and join you guys, which I love. So this show has always been a part of my life. It always will be. But uh, just the fact that so many people remember the old days is is really cool. Yeah. That's, that's neat. Hey, uh, Steve, did you ever have, or you or your brothers have a job selling knives for Cutco? Mm-mm. They worked at their no. dad's shop, uh, their restaurant in the mall. Yeah, we did. Uh, my dad sold yogurt. Okay, so this is in the uh, in the late eighties, early nineties. It was in Sutherland Park Mall in the food court, upper really? level. Really? And yes, and in those days, you got to realize something. The mall was so different. All right, and we had a Foot Locker. Our Foot Action was right next to us. Foot Action. Remember that way they wore the jerseys <laughs> and stuff. And then um, we foot sold Foot Locker. They wore the referee shirts, right? That was Foot Locker, right? Yeah. Exactly. So we sold Dole Whip, Skinny Dip. And pretzels and churros. And it was a big deal back in the day. Yeah. Like, we had waffle cones. We had all that kind of stuff. And this was like late 80s. So, yeah, that's, I mean, that was my memories okay. of, of Your first working. jobs and well, stuff, no, yeah. My first job was being a summer camp counselor. But that was my, uh, this was the job that I, you know, after that. And then I go off to college. My, my dad opens up a kosher deli that lasts like a year in El Paso called Cappy's Deli. And um, God, we, we need should another, bring back yeah. Cappy's. We, I, I was telling him the other day. I was telling both of them the other day. Where do you go to get a good Reuben sandwich? Or a you matzo can't. ball soup as an appetizer? No, no, you can't. You can't do it. Nowhere. No, because no. our last after buzz was about the history of sandwiches, and we got to the Reuben, and oh, then yeah. we were just like, there is no really great uh, kosher deli. No. It doesn't even have to be kosher. I mean, I don't care how they run their kitchen, just the, you know, <laughs> like a New York style <laughs> kosher. That's right. That's a right. A stylized kosher. Like, I bet your dad's place wasn't 100% kosher, right? Oh, no, it was kosher. Oh. Okay. Yeah, they, uh, they, they had the rabbi come in and just make sure everything was going to be done the right way. In other words, you couldn't have like a sandwich with meat and cheese yeah. and things like that. So they kept it. Uh, actually, wait a minute. Let me think for a second. Do they have it kosher? Yeah, no. <laughs> I th you know what? Could you, no, get a I Could you get a sandwich that had beef and cheese on it at the same time? Well, if it's kosher, no. Yeah, right. No, but I think really? it was. You, know, here's, you can't. No, I've I adopted was, this, except for cheeseburgers, because I love cheeseburgers. But this is like a part of so, Jew Jewish dietary restriction that I found out about. So what it's basically saying to the cows is... Uh, yes, we're going to raise you and eat you, but we're not going to disrespect Thank you, you yeah. by eating you with and your, your milk. baby. Yeah, yeah. So, you also can't yeah. have uh, eggs and chicken in the same meal. So from right? what I that's right. So from what I remember, from what I remember, that's very fair minded, yes. very progressive. Yeah. So <laughs> so here's the way here's the way they ran the deli. Oh, you guys would not eat turduckins. Yeah, you could not eat a meat and cheese sandwich at the deli because it was kosher. You could eat a turducken, but. Um, you yeah, know what you they could did? Eat a they it's a turducken. I think you could. Duck and a chicken. We never served turducken at the yeah, deli. Um, what they did was they did have like bagels with, and they and my dad flew all of his stuff in from New York. Wow. So oh, he wow. flew in. So he flew his meat was was Hebrew national meat and flew that in from New York. He flew in the fish because he brought in lox and all this other kind of fish. Oh my god! Flew that in from New York. Gefilte. Um, does <laughs> stop. He brought <laughs> he brought his he brought his bagels in from New York, and then he would bake oh them on the gosh. spot. So, um, so the smell like when you'd walk in sometimes, and then my mom was in the kitchen. She was the one that was. It was interesting. My mom did all the cooking and all the work with a couple of other people in the back, and my dad was like the greeter who was like in the front. He would take the re he would like manage the store, take the uh, orders. I'm convinced they probably would have divorced the two of them because you know <laughs> it, it's it was my. My mom would come out of there. She was all sweating and just, like, miserable. My dad would be smiling about, you know, how great the Mr. day Popularity. was. Popularity. Yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. what's going on? Tap, touching the tables. Yes, exactly. So, but it was a fun, it was a fun time. And then you also had Briar's Deli at the same time. And Briar's was over here on Well, Briar's uh, stuck it out until almost maybe, like, 2000, 2002. Some, yep. But we've well, been over 20 years without a, it's without been, a good deli. All right, I am seeing time. here, we have three different delis in El Paso. All called New York Deli. So I haven't so, been into any of them, but I've been told they're like a bodega style. So it's not necessarily a delicatessen. It's more of it's like... probably um, like, what's that place where you can go get Jason's Deli? 
I, it's probably similar to Jason's Deli. See, so, and, and, you probably and, can't get a matzo ball soup at Jason's Deli, though. No. I would say, listen, I would say the closest thing we have in El Paso, okay, the closest thing we have is Brown Bag over there on uh, uh, by uh, Fort Place. Northeast. Yeah. yeah. It's, oh, Fred and, and Wilson. Fred, Fred Wilson, right. And the reason is Lori, who owns the place there, she brings her meat in from Jersey. And that is probably the closest Jersey cows. thing you're going to get to um, to the real thing here until somebody decides to open. But the problem is, guys, it's so expensive with so freight. Fly, with freight, right. if you really want to do it right, it'll cost you a fortune just to fly it in, and then you got to charge people a, a ton of money, and then right. they're going to be upset. So yeah, it's a tough it's a tough deal. Here what's in the Paso. What's the deli? They have them in Arizona. They have them in uh, Chompies. Yeah, Chompies. Why why can't El Paso get a Chompies? That's pretty damn good. Yeah, I would love it. That would be you know they actually sell Chompies cookies in Albertsons. Ooh, yeah, Chompies looks yeah. good. So Chompies is Chompies is good. Chompies is the closest thing it, we have here to a uh, to a New York. But you got to go six hours. That's a long ways. Even when you go to New York, guys. Listen, I was in New York in March. You got to go to Queens. No, stop. Listen. <laughs> oh, and how expensive are one of those cats uh, sandwiches? Well, first off, the stage deli's closed. It never reopened. Wow. The Carnegie, the, the Carnegie, the Carnegie. No, they just closed. They, I don't know why they, they just shut it down. The Carnegie Deli closed. No. So Katz's, get out of here. Right. Both of them are closed. So Katz's is where we went. We went to Katz's, and Katz's uh, Deli is it's it's <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's still right. really really good. But um, you know, for a sandwich, you're probably looking at uh, I don't know twenty two, twenty three dollars, something like that. That's what about it? Is. That's what it is. And it's what's interesting is they have all these different areas to order. So there's an area to order the sandwiches. There's an area to order um, like hot dogs, a separate right, right, area. Right. Like so, you go to all these different places, and and you have to have your order ready. Yeah, yeah. And then they just and then they'll cut it for you on the spot. The best is when you when you order a pastrami sandwich and the butcher like as he's taking the meat, the first thing he does is he slices off a little piece and hands it to you before he oh. makes your sandwich. Oh, it's so good, so so good. Steve, we have a sports question from Buster, who joins us now. Hello, Buster. Hey. Hi. Hi, Steve. I have a question for you. Hi, Buster. Have, have we finally arrived at the conclusion that boxers, when limited to the Marcus of Queensbury rules, are better at what they do than UFC and MMA fighters? And UFC and MMA fighters are better if they are limited to what they do best. Jake Paul has beaten the top UFC and MMA fighters if they're limited to boxing. Have we finally come to conclude that each is good at what they do and no one is dominant over anyone else? That's an interesting uh, thought. I would say that yeah, I don't, the crossover stuff is just kind of more of a gimmick than anything else. I agree with you. Like, like when they put an MMA guy yeah. against the boss. Buzz, yeah. did you know about Jake Paul's big win this weekend? I heard saw something about it, yeah. I'm sorry, but Jake Paul has beaten the top MMA and UFC fighters he's confronted. In yeah. boxing, though, right? Well, yeah. As long as they're limited to boxing, UFC and MMA fighters have yeah. not done well. I've never been into the gimmick fights. That is never something that interests me. How about I, when I, Muhammad I, I, I Ali agree, boxed against the Japanese wrestler? Did you the pro wrestler? Yeah. yeah, Antonio yeah. Inoki or something yeah, like right. that. I do remember that. Um, yeah, I'm never. That, that's something that's never really interested me too much. Now, get, get a load of this, Nico. This was like a the gimmick match they had back in the '70s. I huh? think Ali was the heavyweight champion at the time, and he took on this this big Japanese wrestler, sumo. No, 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 like. Like oh, wrestling. like professional wrestling. Yeah, wrestling. like professional okay. wrestling. So what the what the wrestler did, and I think it was in Japan, right, mm -hmm. Steve? Mm -hmm. So what the guy did, so he couldn't get punched. Ali had to do the boxing rules. He got on his back, like a you know, like a turtle, on and his then back just kicked and would kick yeah, yeah, yeah. anytime Ali would get close to him, and did it for the entire fight. And of course, everybody was booing. Yeah, because <laughs> oh, that's yeah. not what they wanted to tune in and see. All right. I mean, remember I, they once had they once had Muhammad Ali in the ring with Gorilla Monsoon, who was a professional wrestler back in the day. And then I think Gorilla took him for a ride, like on his shoulders, and basically carried him. This was like mid to late seventies, also. So we've seen a lot of those kind of yeah. gimmicks. Had, I, uh, I think Buster has an interesting premise though, because 
Jake Paul is getting credit as a great boxer, I feel like, in the eyes of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I don't I'm think not he's sure. done that from everybody. I oh. mean, what would Max Kellerman say? Yeah, it wouldn't. He but he has wouldn't. a professional boxing record at this point. Like it's, He does. And it's, I, it's a I, positive I, record. Would they say that these these aren't really the creme de la creme, and also you got them competing in a sport other than their own sport? Yeah, I mean, again, I've just, I, I've, I've seen boxers try to cross over to mixed martial arts and it doesn't always work out too well and, and vice versa. Sometimes you have that rare person that can do them both, but I'm never, I, I just, you know, like, for example, Jake Paul's going to be fighting Mike Tyson. I mean, do you really, now. In if, November, right? Yes. Now, Mike Tyson is what, 57, 58 years old? He'll be Ultimate. 58 when the when the fight happens, yeah. I think. I mean, what am I expecting to see? I mean, Mike Tyson at 58 years old fights right. somebody. So that's 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 a gimmick. That's not anything that we're going to be looking into. And and by the way, you know, I mean, it's not like Mike Tyson's going to turn the clock back 35 years and and you're going to see a 23-year-old Mike Tyson just knock out Logan or Jake Paul and and uh, end this thing. So, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, if he got one if he got one good hook in there though. Sure. Yeah, but what if Jake Paul got one good hook? Yeah, and by the way, that's another thing. What if Jake Paul knocks out Mike Tyson. Right. And then you're like, and then it's just, you have a weird feeling. You're like, oh my it God. It kind of defeats or like ruins the image of exactly. Iron Mike. I Nobody hope. wants to see a 58-year-old Mike Tyson get knocked out by, by a 28 year Especially you know, Jake Paul. Off. <laughs> <laughs> if it, if it looks like it's going to go bad for him. Uh, <laughs> wait, so did you know Jake Paul's uh, record, a professional boxing record right now? 10-1 and one with seven knockouts. Who beat him? Uh, I think that was an actual boxer. <laughs> was it like Floyd Mayweather or somebody? Oh. They had an exhibition, didn't they? Was yeah, that, was right. that an they're not. Fight? I don't think they're in the same weight class. Hey, uh, Steve, you excited about the Olympics? I am. I am. God, I, it feels know. like we're already six weeks into the Olympics. It feels like we're we've, Isn't you know, it crazy? Just promoting it. Yeah. It starts on Friday's opening uh, ceremonies. Oh, uh, Jake Paul lost to Tommy Fury. Sorry, in a split decision. Oh, yeah. Tyson Fury? Ty Tommy. 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 Tommy Tyson's Fury. brother. brother. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, the, opening cer uh, the opening ceremonies for the 2024 Paris Olympics are this Friday. Have you heard about the beds that are supposed to be anti-sex sex beds anti -sex. that they provide in the Olympic villages? Anti-sex beds? Okay, so they're made out of cardboard, and the <laughs> idea is they're sturdy enough to sleep on, but not sturdy enough to shag nasty on. So here's my question to you because I don't I do not know the answer to this. How much sex is normally going down at the Olympic <laughs> Village? <laughs> apparently, the Olympic apparently, Village. okay, so apparently a lot. Oh dude, you you hadn't heard the the rumors already no, about it in no, the no. years past? No. So much sex. Really? Yeah, you're getting young people at the the prime of their lives and yeah. prime of their physical bodies, really. Yeah. And competitive. Sure. Hot all around each other. Oh, so what you're saying is, is that the the U.S. Olympic teams is basically like a mass orgy. Not the U.S. Oh, not no, the, everybody. The, the, everybody. Uh, the Olympic yeah. Village. Yeah, the Olympic Village. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of crossover between the athletes from different sports, sports and different, and different countries. countries. Really? And you got a bunch of people in peak physical condition. I've never thought about that. A lot of them are in their 20s. Uh, a lot of them, if they, compete, if they complete their event, you know, and they're done... What else are you going to do? They've been training <laughs> yeah. for eight years, four years, or That's whatever. Now, let me ask you, you got to blow off some steam. So, or something. Here's the, so here's the next question, okay? If they have sex, so what? Like, why should that be something that ultimately the the Olympic Committee is worried about? Really good question. I believe STD rates of Olympic athletes are, are proven to go up after the uh, tr their their visit to the village. So that might be one concern. You want to bring a f souvenir home for Paris. That's for sure. <laughs> you know, if if sex were an Olympic sport, I would I would get gold because I always come first. Oh my God. <laughs> you know what's interesting? <laughs> that, you know, <laughs> Look at Joanna's <laughs> cringy face. <laughs> um, Here is an athlete, Irish gymnast, Reese McClenahan, who is showing the cardboard bed. That's not supposed to be durable enough for sexual activity, but here he is testing it by jumping, running, even doing a handstand on his cardboard bed. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me start it from the beginning. I'm at the Paris Olympic Games, and I once again have these cardboard anti-sex beds. When I tested them last time, they withstood my testing. Maybe I wasn't rigorous enough, though. 
Exactly, he's giving it. Pass the test. It's fake. Fake news. <laughs> fake news. It's fake news. Yeah. Break dancing mm-hmm. is an Olympic sport this year. They don't call it break dancing though. It's just breaking. Breaking. Yeah. Is, Has it ever been an Olympic sport? <laughs> might have been an exhibition or something. You know, every now and then they'll have some kind of novelty exhibition sport. I don't. I don't know. But do you think? Break dancing is an Olympic worthy sport. I'll tell you after it's, I watch it. It's very physical. Yeah. It's very physical. Really? Yeah, it's your whole body. You're keeping your body up right in well, different. Is motions. it individual or is it a group uh, group uh, thing? How does how does it work? There is a group team, but I believe everybody competes individually. Okay. I've got a list of the best songs for break dancing according to the U.S. Olympic breakers. All right. All right. Uh. Team USA's Jeffrey Jeffro Lewis and Victor Montalvo picked their 11 best break dancing songs. I have the number one queued up and ready to go for you. All right. But here are some of the highlights. Protect Your Neck by Wu-Tang Clan at number six. <laughs> Do you want to uh, hear a little bit? I, I don't know, man. All right. Uh, just you, It depends on how quickly you can get them up. It- Protect Your Neck. It'll be the first Olympic sport that has to be beeped. <laughs> yeah, this is the radio. This is the radio edit, Joanna. Just for you. Yeah. All right. How about Hot Potato by Freestyle Fellowship? This, this, you're not gonna. Be no, fast. I'm not. You're not nope. gonna be fast. Enough. Let's just listen to some right. Wu Tang. Cavern by Liquid Liquid. Uh, and the number one is a song from 1972. I don't think break dancing existed in 1972. I don't think so either. The only kind of break dancing is if you were trying to disco and you fell down and broke your leg. Uh, <laughs> Can somebody find this song? The, I got it. the artist is Babe Ruth, and the song is called The Mexican. You ever heard it's of a- that, Joanna? No. Here it goes. I think it kind of hits a riff, and yeah. then you really get into the break dancing part in about ten seconds. Okay. I like it. All right, there you go. There How is, have we missed this song over the, the last uh, you know, 52 is years? The, is the number one breakdancing song according to the American Breakers. I never even knew there was a band called Babe Ruth. I'm finding all this out today as well. <laughs> Do you think it's one guy or a band? It's, Sound like a band. It sounded like some kind of proto-disco. Mm. You know, and I like guess the stuff that was kind of disco right before mm-hmm. disco really shot off. There's a lot of songs from the early 70s in this group, which is interesting to me because, again, you're right. 70s is no more for disco than anything else, and these songs are even pre-disco. The main, the the highest-ranking kind of current song is Brand New by Tyga, YG, and <laughs> Lil Wayne. You got that? Tyga. Tyga. YG. And Lil Wayne. You there's, don't pronounce is there a like song that. called Tyson versus Ali? Yes, it's by Benny the Butcher featuring <laughs> Benny the Butcher versus Conway the Machine. Oh wow! <laughs> or featuring Conway the Machine. All right, sorry. Yeah, we need to uh, we need to explore these. I was songs. watching some of the British. Open. Do you want to hear that a little bit of that? Yeah, is it, we'll is it clean? It, but we'll oh, good point. Cue it up, and we'll hear it. So I was watching a little bit of the British, you know, and since it was in Scotland, I guess mm-hmm. it was. Several hours before us. So yes, eight. After it was off, whatever I was watching it on turned into ESP and the Ocho. They like they were calling it the Ocho. Are you aware that they do this on weekends on ESPN? No. Do you want to hear what sports I unwillingly? I mean, I just left the TV on, so yeah, I want to hear disc golf. Oh, really? I believe me, every, frisbee golf. 
yeah, yes. Physical. Every yes. one of these I'm going to mention, these people are taking it as serious as it's Game 7 in the World Series. That's how serious. Or that they're lining up a birdie putt to win the Masters. Man. They take it seriously. These disc golf guys do not mess around. That was followed by foosball. And again, you just have to picture these dudes, not just like, oh, we're going to have fun playing some foosball. These guys are into, and women. By the they way, did they, doubles too. Uh, did they have spins? Spins? Yeah. You know how you, when you have foosball, you, you can sometimes spin it real hard. And just <laughs> Do they have spin rules? <laughs> yeah. Spins or no spins? That, no. Was our, that was our biggest thing when we used to play foosball <laughs> as kids. Way, We're like, spins or no spins? I think the way most people play foosball is you just you just spin all the wheels. No, you're not allowed. You're talking about the power hit. Where you're, you're, not allowed, you're not allowed to spin the, the what do you call that? What, the, the, the player. The, the player, yeah. You have to, like, use your wrist and hit it real hard, but you can't spin it. Otherwise. Otherwise, you might, you know, you might score. Anyway, but so these easy. guys were doing things like actually passing it from one foosball man to the other wow. foosball man and then blocking. It was almost foosball. Did you say foosball? I don't want you playing no foosball with that Coach <laughs> Klein and his gargantuans. Foosball is the devil. devil. <laughs> <laughs> um, followed by E. Gaming, but I couldn't even tell what they were playing. They mostly just showed a scoreboard for an hour. They probably were playing college football 24. Or 25, I mean. I, I don't know. It had no gameplay that, that I noticed for the entire hour it was on. And then that was followed, Steve, mm -hmm. by the Western Minnesota Auctioneer Contest. Auctioneer? Wait a minute, they're actually trying to have people compete to see who's the best auctioneer? Yeah, on one of the ESPNs. Oh my God. That sounds awful. Yeah. Or did you actually watch it? And were you drunk? No, no, no. This was like in the morning on Sunday. So, so I, no and yes. I was getting there, but no. Uh, Maybe you could have like a Minnesota auctioneer drinking game. That might be, <sighs> you create something that's kind of fun there. They show cornhole. That's just like regular programming on one of the ESPNs. Cornhole's become mainstream. I'm going to tell you something. That's, that's Oh, my God. They mainstream. even have jerseys, like sponsored jerseys they wear hey, during the, the, the cornhole. The foosball guys No, do. they didn't. Yes, they did. The foosball? foosball guys, too, had, like, uh, their sponsors on their shirts and they stuff. They look like a NASCAR. Uh, you want to hear Tyson vs. Ali? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Oh. Tyson vs. Ali. Number 10 on the best songs to break to. Anybody want to know who would be better, Tyson, Tyson vs. Ali. Oh, Ali? Yeah. Uh. They compare the greatest to the greatest, like Boston versus the Lakers. Question: Do your legacy rest depending on where you rank amongst them? Current and the late. So All right, I Buzz is already tuned out. <laughs> 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 I can already see in his face that he's not following he's not, them. Uh, well, no, I thought I thought he was interested when they said Boston versus the Lakers. All of a sudden, Buzz is like, "Okay, I remember oh, that. That was in the '80s. I remember oh, what's going on." Yeah. There. yeah. There's a song with Notorious B.I.G. featuring Eminem called "Dead Wrong" that made the top ten. Of breakdance songs. Hey uh, guys, a bunch of comments about delis. I just want to throw out to you. <laughs> People are saying there's a really good uh, deli on Mesa called New York Famous Deli. Uh, Steve, somebody else says the lamb sandwich from New York Deli, which is a different one. New York City Deli is the best. Did your dad sell gabagool? <laughs> that's Italian. That's Italian, <laughs> that's dude. Capicol. Yeah, that's <laughs> <Capicol. laughs> no, I think that's mostly pork, <laughs> so probably <laughs> not. And what about the classic gimmick match between Rocky Balboa and Thunderlips? Yeah. That was one of the all-time greats. And truthfully, that is like the match that everybody does remember. It launched Hulk Hogan's entire career because... 40 years later, he's introduced to Donald <laughs> Trump at the RMC. Just like that. An That's overnight right. success. It's come full circle. You go from playing Thunderlips and kissing your own biceps <laughs> in the ring to introduce to Donald Trump at the RNC. Now, we go to Paris for an update on the Summer Games. Shane. I'm here, Bob. The summer games start at the end of the week. Mm. What are some things to look forward to? Well, Bob. Shane. Simone Biles is back, and everybody in the U.S. is excited to see if she freaks Leif out again. Oh, hey. Shane, did you say freaks Leif out? We, oui, Bob. That's French. But for, 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 <laughs> uh, pardon my French. And what about the river, Shane? Sane, Bob? Yes, I am. Well, Bob, the whole world is excited <laughs> to tune in and see people swim in pool water. Le poo? Uh, we. Oui. Also. Thanks, Shane. We'll trip back in with you at the Paris Summer Games soon. It's Shane, Bob. Yeah, but not yet. Hey, it's Daniel Paulus. I'll be along starting at 3 with everything from Led Zeppelin to Soundgarden. If you're like me and you have or you 
want to put the power of radio to work for your brand, log on to RadioUpdate.com. Why do people listen to the Buzz Adams Morning Show? I love listening to your show. It's like listening to the uh, radio edition of a clown show from a circus. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now more of the greatest show on earth on 95.5 KLAQ. Uh, do an after buzz today. We does the after buzz as soon on as Tuesdays. The and morning Thursdays. shows over on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We record the after buzz. Make that available for podcast wherever you get your podcast. And don't forget the daily buzz on demand. Mm-hmm. Also, remember I've got an improv workshop I'm producing this weekend, guys. It's not just a must for actors. It can do more than just give you fodder for a resume. How how long does the class la- last? So it's three days, four hours each day. Four hours a day. Yeah, so you're going to definitely get your money's worth. I'm providing food and beverages. And then a friends and family show um, on Sundays to, to show off. Say there's a kid who's like a sophomore in high school and is interested in improv. Would you let anybody that young be in your improv class? Absolutely. Anybody... Yeah. Uh, 16, 15 to 16 and older. Anything younger than that is probably a little too young. Yeah, for probably doing. a little too young. But it is a bunch of grown-ups getting to play pretend, but it will help you improve communication skills, relationships, and your life. Go to MassiveTix.com. T-I-X. Massive Tix. That's right. Buzz, you joke about Hulk Hogan, and that was funny. That was funny. Uh, but lest you forget, he was the first, and as far as I know, the only professional wrestler to appear on the cover of Sports Illustrated as a professional wrestler at the peak of Hulkamania. And you're right. He, he introduced Trump. What you gonna do, brother, when the Hulkamaniacs turn wild on you? I mean, that Trump doesn't... He changed it to trump maniacs right? That, he did that, call trump maniac That doesn't correct. give him any more credibility. <laughs> he was right? on the cover Brother. of Sports but you know, my, He was on the cover. He was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. That was right before WrestleMania. Uh, still when was, just as ridiculous one. a choice to yeah. introduce your candidate for By the, the way, So I, they, go I, back, they go back a long ways because Hulk and, and Trump through that, wrestling... That's not my friendly. point. The point is if it's Trump a terrible had, image hey, for uh, not the best politics. Was, you didn't like it when Hogan couldn't rip off that last shirt... And was struggling so hard <laughs> yeah. to get that last piece of fabric That's ripped what happens off. When you I put thought that was great. A clown in front. That's what happens when you put an 80-year-old out there trying to take <laughs> yes. his shirt off. Yes, I loved it. I was, I, I was watching that. I was like, come on, Hulkster. You can do it. You can rip off that last piece of, Steve, of material. our politics have devolved into idiocracy. Well, listen. I, mean, I, I think that if Trump had ever really gotten into working out and got a connection for some performance-enhancing drugs, he might have ended up looking like Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Probably. Anyway, um, by the way, uh, we were talking food a little while ago in delis. You're going to get a lot of good responses from your listenership on Yeah, on okay, sandwiches. so there are over three different delis, all named, but they're not related. One's like New York City Deli, one's New York City Gourmet Deli, New York City. It, they all have New York City in the, in the front. So you were telling me uh, the kind of signs a, of a good deli. They're not a deli unless you can get a matzo ball soup. That's true. Yep. That is true. Um, That's kind and what, of like the bar you have to... See, for me personally, for me personally, if you have boar's head meat and you're trying to throw that off as, as like authentic New York deli, it's not. Yeah, hey, from you, El Paso. What do I know? You wouldn't get that. You wouldn't get that if you go to New York. In isn't fact... A, isn't a boar a pig? <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> Just the brand um, name, dummy. There are... There's actually... Like, come to the bacon deli. <laughs> 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 There's actually two cuts of pastrami you can order, okay? Oh. There is a, they call it the number one and the number two. Now, the number one is a lean cut. So if you like your pastrami lean, that's uh, when you heat it up, that's the way to go. But Second the number cut. two is fatty. Yeah, it's the so, same way the brisket is at Rudy's. Exactly. So you go for <laughs> you the number two. Fat, you get right. the fattiest fat meat you can now, get. Now, is this your favorite uh, sandwich, because you were you, off air, you were telling me uh, that there's your favorite sandwich you wanted to talk about. So my favorite sandwich would be this. Okay. It's um, going to be a hot pastrami, corned beef combo on rye, grilled. So you, you grill the sandwich and you grill the rye bread with um, Swiss cheese, Russian dressing, Mm. And coleslaw, mm. all on the sandwich. What so kind of it's slaw? I'm coleslaw. How so do you spell that? 
C O L E. Okay. I thought you were saying cold slaw. Okay. You're, what are you doing? I don't know what, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> it's kind of like I a. Heard it's, it. Don't I interrupt heard it. the man Listen, talking about a sandwich. It's okay. a Reuben hybrid. So instead of using sauerkraut like you use on the Reuben, you use the, you coleslaw. Use the coleslaw. The coleslaw. The coleslaw. And you combine the pastrami and corned beef together. You heat it up. You grill it. The grilling is important because you want that rye bread to be kind of crunchy and, and have uh, have a little butter on it. Oh, my God. It's unbelievable. Hey, you wanted to mention we have some leftover dining deals from last week, right? We do. Hacienda de Mesilla. That was our feature on Friday. Um, we do have some right now. So if you are interested, if you first off, if you've never been to Hacienda de Mesilla in Old Mesilla, this is the perfect time to do it because we're giving you the $50 for $25. And whether it's steak, seafood, uh, terrific uh, New Mexican style dishes, they've got it all. And they also have a brunch menu on weekends. They have a, they also have a boutique hotel, which you could use that for if you wanted to stay there in Mesilla over the weekend. So $50 for $25, limited one per person, but those are available now at, at dining deals. All right, very good. That's the sound of the police. That's the sound of the beast. I've got a true crime report. Oh, yay. Actual crime stories from around the world and across the nation. Any Florida man? I think there are a couple of Florida stories, but I have not designed them. Nah, we're not going to play Florida man. Okay. Uh, A woman allegedly tried to leave a Longhorn Steakhouse, a dine and dash. This was in Florida without paying. She got out, but she had to come back because she forgot her purse. Uh, Oh, of course. No. The The one mistake in dining and dashing. (laughs) Right. Leaving evidence. Uh,. Another f- customer filmed the Dine and Dasher arguing with the manager trying to get her purse back. A man who was with her, the Dine and Dasher, is telling her to chill out. I have the audio here for you. So this is what happens when you Dine and Dash and then have to come back for your purse. Give me my purse. Give it to me. Chill out. No. Give me my purse. Chill out. Breathe. Somebody's pleading with her to calm down. Give me my purse. I need it. You need to pay, ma'am. The other customer said it was eventually resolved, quote, after screaming at the manager, I think they paid. She kept yelling that she wanted her property. I believe the guy paid and they dashed again. <laughs> so they ended up paying? I guess. Because she... <laughs> oh, my God. Boy, that takes a lot of chutzpah. <laughs> to go back in is like, hey, yeah, yeah, I was the person who ran out on the check a few minutes ago. <laughs> Did you see a purse? It's beige. <laughs> a, uh, okay, so here's a story from Tennessee. It involves uh, the vi- I didn't know there was such a thing as a vice mayor, but I guess they have huh. a vice mayor. A vice mayor's house was vandalized with Vienna sausages. You might know these as teeny weenies. Or Vienna sausages. They come in the little cans, and they got that goopy gel. You know, you know what Vienna sausage? I do. I'm, I'm not familiar with teeny weenies at all. <laughs> I have no well, clue. the vandalism was done by a former employee of the Jacksboro, Tennessee Police Department. His name is Joseph Weaver, and he's facing charges after s- <laughs> stealing. First of all, he s- stole the cans of Vienna sausages. To vandalize the home of Jimmy Snodgrass. <laughs> that is not, that's a, not an uncommon name. I knew some Snodgrass. Snod- we, we some Snodgrass? <laughs> in first grade, we definitely called them Snodgrass. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. Jimmy Snodgrass is the <laughs> vice mayor of Jacksboro, Tennessee. This happened uh, a couple of weeks ago. Snodgrass says he woke up around 11 p.m. after hearing several loud thumps. He walked around his house and found some broken windows and various cans of Vienna sausages lying around his home. (laughs) The police investigation zeroed in on Joseph Weaver after they saw security footage of him at Walmart buying the Vienna sausages the day of the vandalism. 
All right, well, already we've got a contradiction here. It said that he stole the Beanie Weenies, but then it says the video shows him buying the, uh, not Beanie Weenies, Vienna sausages. <laughs> Sorry. Call it whatever you want. No, not, no, no, the Beanie Weenies are, you know what, that, those are like the baked beans with weenies mixed into You got tiny weenies on the brain? Um, well, Weaver admitted to the crime. At one point, he said he meant it to be funny and that it shouldn't be taken so serious. It sounds like, according to the police report, he may have been intoxicated at the time <laughs> the weenie vandalism took place. It's unclear why Weaver did it, but it sounds like he may have been upset about having to resign his position. Not clear if the vice mayor had any role in that, but Weaver was charged with vandalism and theft. Maybe he did steal the Venus sausages. Fascinating news coming to us from South Africa. I know South Africa is a pretty modern country. They've got Johannesburg, which is a big city, and police in South Africa are investigating a case involving two suspects who allegedly shapeshifted and became cats. <laughs> to escape their holding cells last week. What? That's all we got. The police are trying to investigate the claims that two suspects shapeshifted into cats. Well, as so we all know, escape. sometimes you can turn into a cat late at night and escape from whatever confinement you're in. <laughs> a robbery suspect led police on a high-speed chase through Los Angeles and live-streamed him doing it the entire time. Sounds about right. The, this guy put it up on live stream. It showed that his two-month-old daughter oh my God. and the daughter's mother were in the car with him. Fortunately... Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow. <laughs> police eventually got him to pull over, but you can hear the, the mom, or the baby's mama, uh, telling him to pull over. Here's part of the live stream, and LAPD detective or de deputy Tony Lamedico talking about the chase and eventual arrest. Bro, just pull over and put your hands up, bro. My baby is in a car. Oftentimes in situations like these, the bad guys use the baby as a shield. It's a great moment of cowardice that when you witness it, you kind of, it pumps the brakes on everything. As a, as a father, you, you just can't put yourself in that position as a good father. So when you see a father do that to their child, it, it strikes a chord in you that, uh, that you want to make sure that you do everything in your power to bring this guy to justice. All right. What a terrible story. I mean, yeah. really. You have the the mom yelling at the dad to pull over and, mm -hmm. oh, that's terrible. These are all supposed to be cautionary. Hey, let's nature. get back to the shapeshifter for a second. <laughs> I mean, I've I mean, watched... until you investigated, how do you know they didn't shapeshift <laughs> I've, I've watched the shows like Fringe and some of these other shows over the years where they cover shapeshifting. So, do any so of you... we have an expert. Do any of you believe in shapeshifters? I mean... If you take enough Ozempic, I hear. <laughs> I mean, Buzz cleans up real nice. He can... <laughs> he eventually looks good. That's a form of Yeah, that's a form of shapeshifting. Sure. And if you could shapeshift into any particular form, Buzz, what would it be? Because I don't think cats would be tops on your list. Shape of a tidal wave. <laughs> I'd be like the Wonder Twins. I'd always have to be like water. <laughs> form of... A giant a eagle, a bucket of water, right? And then the eagle would carry the water. It's like, oh, uh, what's your greatest remember? enemy? A mop? So this was, <laughs> this was, this was Jan and Zena. They were twins from an alien planet, and in uh, Super Friends. <laughs> I can't believe of, we have Buzz explaining those no, super and, twins. And, and no, this one is could funny. transfer into <laughs> any any animal, <laughs> and the other one could transfer yeah. into any any kind of water. So when. Jaina, Zan and Jaina. Jaina was the girl, which she would transfer into a Do you a remember the monkey's name? Gleek. Oh, yeah. Gleek. <laughs> Gleek, the space monkey. When she would turn into a, a bucket of water, there would be Jan, Jana's face. She still had her face. She with the water. water with a face on it. Yeah. We've got to stay awake, Jaina. <laughs> Wonder Twin Powers activate. <laughs> right. when, they, when they needed to transform into like a bicycle, it's just like eh, make it out of ice. I'm sure that'll work yeah. fine. And just one wheel. I don't need the two. Right. 
I need to put on some weight before I can be a bicycle. <laughs> the unicycle will do. Shape of an ice unicycle. How would the gears work? Come on. Coming up after the Buzz Adams Morning Show, Glenn Garza and Daniel Polis. Food and beverage every day. Summer savings start today, only at your local lodge. Live from the KLAQ studios, the Buzz Adams Morning Show. Courtesy of Glasheen, Vias, and Interman Personal Injury Lawyers. At GVILaw.com. All right, we will have an after buzz today. We will have a buzz on demand uh, podcast. Yeah. Should I preview the after buzz topic right now? It always seems to me that you kind of make it up on the spot. I do. Mm-hmm. I literally get to the <laughs> uh, to the computer and then it's like, what are we going to talk about today? Uh, is Cappy still here? Yes, he is. Hold on. We got another call for Steve Kaplowitz. Here goes. Morning, Buzz. Morning, Cappy. Hey, Cappy, I'm glad you're there. Um, you know, speaking of everything sports, uh, Jerry Jones, he's in court as we speak in that paternity case. There's a woman out there claiming his, she's his daughter. They're, they're in court right now, according to w, WFA News. Have a good day, guys. Love y'all. Bye-bye. Oh, that I, sounds like a sticky situation. I wrote about this at KLAQ.com like a year ago. Uh, Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones returns to a courtroom to fight a decades-old paternity dispute. Okay, so this woman claims that Jerry Jones is her father and wants to have paternity tests. He paid for her child support. Yeah. Like her entire All the way through 18 like year 18, childhood. Right. Okay, but right. does he He is suing the, the mother the daughter and her mother claiming they violated the confidentiality agreement. And I got to tell you, it, is Jerry Jones kind of a scumball? I'm not going to address that right now. But it seems like he upheld his end of the bargain, right? Yeah. yeah, I feel like she wants a larger cut of the Jones That's what fortune. it sounds like. Or yeah. does she want him to formally acknowledge her as a child of his? Because that could have repercussions, other things, right? The, if, the, he, if he formally... The woman who says that Jerry Jones is her father is 27-year-old Alexandra Davis. Uh, her mother, Cynthia Davis, took the stand, claims that Jones got her pregnant in the late 90s. Yeah. About 96, like right, right, years, right in the yeah. height of their Super Bowl run. So he would have only been, what, 78? Okay. She said he had a contract written up for her to sign two years after the baby was born. It barred her, the mother, from suing to establish paternity. It sounds like Jerry Jones might have had like a standard uh, contract written up for anybody that he accidentally got pregnant. Hey, it's boilerplate. Boy, you want to talk about hating condoms. <laughs> uh, Davis, and I don't know if they're talking about, I think it must be the mother. Davis said in the moment she felt desperate and would have signed anything. Now she says she regrets it. Unfortunately, that's not how contracts work. You don't get to say 27 years later, I wouldn't have, you know. It really sounds like you're putting yourself in Jerry Jones's shoes. <laughs> Dude has been pay- he paid up. He paid up. Every month they got a check. I think over the course of the 18 years, it was millions, too. Like, it wasn't just, uh, you know, uh, a minimal. couple dollars here or there. No, nah, I think she did very well. I think the, she made like $3 million. The judge ruled that Jerry Jones must take a paternity test, but he doesn't want to do that, so he countersued. I mean, it sounds like by sending her money for 18 years of her life, he's kind of admitting to it to begin with. Now, he must have had a lawyer drop that contract. Any lawyer worth their salt would have said, get a paternity test. You never know. That's right. Uh, Meanwhile, the Cowboys are at training camp this week in Oxnard, California. Jerry was supposed to speak at an opening uh, news conference, but it had to be pushed back because of the court proceedings. And because his bedtime is early. Jerry Jones is suing the 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 daughter and her mother for one point six million in attorney fees. He still denies being Alexandra's father. Okay. Then take the paternity test and then sue them and get all that money back that you were paying for 18 years. Exactly. Uh, You're like, contracts are there for a reason. reason. Uh, I have an article that I wrote last week, but it's worth going back to check out. Did you know, and the EPA has confirmed this, there's lithium naturally occurring in El Paso's water. 
That's one of the things somebody told me like my first week living in El Paso. They said, you know, El Paso has lithium in its water. They even referenced it in that movie, The Stepford Wives. You mean lithium, the thing they use to treat crazy people? Yeah. And the EPA says that they have correlated. El Paso is not the only place that has lithium. First of all, it's about a thousand times less than a dose for psychiatric purposes. But the EPA says there's some connection, they believe, places that have lithium in their water and lower rates of suicide and violent crime. And El Paso is a safe city. Yeah. I remember a short story by Stephen King in one of his collections of short stories that was all about this town in Texas. Clearly, it was a stand-in for El Paso. I think it was called La Plata. And, <laughs> right? And so somebody had discovered, oh, this stuff in their water makes everybody super chill, and they have really low violent crime. So anyway, uh, the scientist decides all we got to do is get this out to everybody in the word, world. So he concocts this scheme to plant it in a, in a volcano that's about to go off. Yeah. So a volcano goes off, and if I remember the end of the story, it was called the end of the whole mess or something. Oh, my um, God. So it works, and everybody, ah, nobody's, no war, no crime, yeah. no violence. It's all gone until a couple years later when people notice that it works too good, and it basically turns everybody on the planet into drooling morons. Okay, well, that's not going to happen <laughs> to us. <laughs> I'm just telling you how the Stephen King short story went, but I guess there's this whole mythology about there being lithium in El Paso water in the Environmental Protection Agency definitely has confirmed. Uh, all right. Have a great one, everybody. Thanks, Cap, for dropping by and spending the last hour with us. You got it, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. And uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow, too. Join us at 6 a.m. tomorrow. Woo! Check out the After Buzz, the Buzz on Demand podcast. Both of those will be going up in just a few hours. Show is done. Are we done here? We are done here. I'd like to discuss this further, but i got to go. It's been real, and it's been fun, and it's been real fun. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. The Morning Show will be back tomorrow at 6 a.m.